and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ahoy, welcome in Rotterdam. Ho oh, ho, oh, dames en heren, van harte welkom hier op het wereldkampioenschap Shirtrack. Fantastisch dat u hier bent, u kunt mij misschien een klein beetje zien, helemaal in de hoek van het stadion, rechts naast het grote podium. Voor de mensen die mij zien, kunnen even zwaaien aan de kant, even zwaaien aan deze kant, aan de overkant ook. En dan wil ik gewoon heel even luisteren, zet ik de muziek even uit, gewoon even kijken of u er een klein beetje zin in heeft vandaag. Ahoy, heeft u er een beetje zin in? Oh, dat is al een nou, ik, ik, ik maak er ongeveer 65% van, dat gaat hartstikke goed. So ladies and gentlemen, of course, once again, a very warm welcome to you all here at the World Championships Short Track 2024. Once again, of course, in the capital, Short Track capital of the world here in Ahoy, Rotterdam. A very warm welcome, of course, to all our sponsors and partners as well, and of course to the athletes here, performing their best, doing their best here on the beautiful ice. We gaan uh, zo meteen beginnen met uh, de wedstrijden, dames en heren. We gaan daar een hele, hele, hele mooie, gezellige show van maken met elkaar. Nou, ik uh, weet zeker, het Nederlands publiek is het allerbeste short track publiek van de wereld. Ik zei, het Nederlands publiek is het allerbeste short track publiek van de wereld. Ja, hartstikke goed, mooi. Dan wil het even duidelijk hebben. En dan gaan we daar zo meteen eens even wat gezelligs van maken. Ik ga zo meteen even een showteam aan jullie voorstellen helemaal. Maar tot die tijd was ik even benieuwd of, uh, of er mensen zijn die het misschien leuk vinden om even mee, mee te doen met een uh, gezellig iets. Dus ik zou willen vragen, dames en heren, maak de handen eens even vrij. Mag ik even twee handen zien? Twee handen, lukt dat? Ladies and gentlemen, put two hands out in front of you. Two hands, two hands. Goed, gaan we even heel rustig even klappen, omdat het erbij hoort. Rustig aan. Klap, klap. Klap op de maten, klap, rustig aan, rustig aan, rustig beginnen. Rustig aan, rustig aan. Heel goed. Nou langzaam die handen wat hoger, die handen wat hoger. Put your hands up, put your hands up, put your hands up. En twee keer zo snel, twee keer zo snel. Klap, klap. Ik zie sommige mensen die erbij gaan staan, dat is wel een beetje de energie die we zoeken vandaag. Die is wel een beetje de energie die we zoeken. Nog even een heel speciaal welkom, want er zijn als het goed is een hele hoop scholen binnen, klopt dat? Nou, dan gaan we straks nog even wat aandacht aan besteden. Van harte welkom ook natuurlijk aan jullie. Ik wil graag even jullie meenemen, dames en heren. Ik moet goed tegen deze fantastische wedstrijd van vandaag op twee van deze zijn. Thank <laughs> you. 
The storylines are bountiful as the 2024 Short Track World Championships welcome the world to Rotterdam. The two Crystal Globe champions are ready to cement a dominant season with world titles. 
Let's park G1. He claimed his second straight World Cup title this season, and he comes to the kingdom aiming to defend his two world championships from a year ago. Meanwhile, 19-year-old sensation Kim Gilley has been an absolute force on the ice with tactics, power, savvy beyond her years. The Korean team comes to Rotterdam seeking uh, icing on the cake, a world title or two. For the spoilers this weekend, take your pick. American Kristen Santos Griswold, Canadian Stephen Dubois, both runners up in tight crystal globe chases. So, more than capable to, to win their first game world game titles. Two time 500 world champ Xander Velzibor aims for a three peat on here, home ice. And, and if you like wild cards, sure stick with us over the course of the weekend. How about not only last year's women's crystal globe champion Suzanne Schulting and Canada's powerhouse Kim Butan? They both just recently rejoined the World Cup circuit a couple of weeks ago. And a major announcement just a few days ago. The most decorated short track skater in the sport, Italy's Ariana Fontana, returns to competition this weekend for the first time since the Beijing Olympics. So clearly, star power is here, and the promise of memories guaranteed. We welcome you to Rotterdam, Ahoy, in the Kingdom of the Netherlands for the 2024 ISU World Short Track Championships. Welcome to all of you, wherever you are watching. Patrick Keen is with you on this qualifying first session. There's a look at the schedule of what we have coming up over the course of the full day and over the course of this World Championship weekend. We will have individual runnings of the 500, the 1,000, the 1,500. No second running of any event. We'll have all the relays, the mixed, the women's, the men's. And again, when you get to these World Championships, skaters do have the option to race in all three individual events. We'll tell you who will be doing that, chasing three individual world titles as we get underway. There, they'll look at the officials for the World Championships. So as we are moments away from launching things, we again thank you for joining us. Peter Wirth is going to be our chief referee over the course of the weekend. Libby Omea, Sasha Hiko, Nita are the assistant referees. In the video box, Sarah Henderson, Danny LeMay, and the starters, Hans Terstappen and Antal Novak. So look at the beautiful ice here in Rotterdam. And this venue, the Rotterdam Ahoy, actually did host the World Championships seven years ago, back in 2017. It was built in the late 60s renovated for a third time about 13 years ago and it hosts a lot of big events over the years the world judo championships the table tennis championships the european volleyball championships artistic gymnastics have been here as well even the mtv europe music awards have been here twice including most recently in 2016. So the event schedule for the day, we will kick off on this first session with the women's and men's quarterfinals of the 1500. Then we'll get to the prelims of the men's five, the heats of the women's five, and then the heats of the men's 500. And that'll wrap up the uh, first session on this Friday in Rotterdam. And then the heats and the quarters of all the other individual and uh, relay events will come up in the second session. Should be a, a really good crowd over the course of the weekend, particularly tomorrow and Sunday, as we are ready now to open things up. So in the women's 1500, we will have seven heats, 43 total skaters. There's a look at the opening six in this first heat of the 1500. Danae Bly, Courtney Sorrell, two outstanding skaters from Canada. There's a look at Yara Van Kirkhoff from the Netherlands. So the long, short track season seems like it just began, coming to a close here in Rotterdam. The Crystal Globe champions were anointed just a few weeks ago after the final World Cup events in Gdansk. And quite a race it was. Kim Gilley on the women's side, the 19-year-old claimed the Crystal Globe. Park ji defended, so he is the two-time now reigning Crystal Globe champion, but tight races. I mean, Stephen Dubois took him to the very last day. It was only a 19-point win for Park, and Kim Gilley had to fight off Christian Santos Griswold, who just continues to get better. Santos Griswold only 31 points behind at the end. So here we go, heat number one of seven of the women's 1500. Ready. 
So the World Championships are officially underway here in Rotterdam and on the home ice for the Dutch. And that's Yara Van Kerkhoff in helmet number 12, the orange and white right now in fourth position. Donna Blind, who is top 10 at this distance over the course of the year, as was her team at Courtney Soro. Soro in the number two helmets on the inside right there. She claimed a world bronze last year in the thousand. Ajadora Simodi in helmet 54 from Hungary. She's already had a, a great last month. Simodi at the World Junior Championships only a couple of weeks ago in Gdansk. Uh, one junior world gold at this distance in the 1500. So we'll watch as the, the future of Hungarian women's short track is on the ice right now. She's settling into fourth position. Paula Kuntz-Terzuski from Germany and Katarina Biric from Croatia on the left side of your screen. And Soro and Bly for Canada right now, one, two. Courtney Soro has been a very consistent skater on the senior circuit over the last few years. Did not reach a podium though this World Cup season, a bit of a surprise, but uh, still consistently reaching semifinals and eight finals. And perhaps this will be her opportunity as she gets back on a world championship ice. We'll watch and see how she fares over the course of the weekend. So for the 1500, 13 and a half laps, there's a look at Soro in the number two helmet. And the young teenager, Simone in 54, right now second behind on a Bly as we get inside the final five laps of this opening quarterfinal. And this is around the time in these 1500 meter races, four laps to go where we'll start to see the strategy and the moves. And certainly the fans here in Rotterdam are gonna be watching Yara Van Kirkhoff in the 12. She right now is in fourth position. First and second, and then a maximum of five third place finishers move on to the semifinals. Everybody else to the repechage, unless they draw a penalty. So here we go, inside two laps. There is Soro right now in third. Simone right now in between the two Canadians, and Van Kirkhoff is with the front group. There's the bell, final lap. And it's the two Canadians, blind Soro. Van Kirkhoff trying to get past the teenager Simone and will not be able to do it. Simone does finish third. So blind 230 flat and Soro unofficially finished 1-2. If you've been with us over the course of this World Cup season, we've been blessed to have referee liaisons at the venue, and that will be the case this weekend as well. So for any potential reviews and penalties, we'll get some live communication as to what potentially that the referee will be taking a look at over the course of the weekend. We'll actually have some uh, live in-venue commentators uh, from Rotterdam over the course of the weekend beginning tomorrow. So that's a, a special new additive as we head to the World Championships. And the results from the first quarterfinal heat are official. They Revise Bly's time a little bit faster, 229-97. Soro second, and Simone in that coveted third spot. Again, the repechage for all of these events will take place over the next couple of days. So now we'll move to the second of the seven heats, and top of the table right there, Christian Santos Griswold, the 29-year-old American, who's had just an unbelievable campaign. She's the top-ranked 1,000-meter skater, number three in the 1,500. 11 individual podiums for Kristen Santos Griswold, five of them gold. As a matter of fact, she won gold at a World Cup this year at every individual distance, including the 500. So Santos Griswold with kind of chasing American history here this weekend in Rotterdam. So as they break away from the start line, six in the second quarter final. And that includes uh, Zhang Yi of China, Rebecca Silese in the Mets, who took bronze at the European Championships about a month and a half ago at the 1500. Winland Audets of France, Svetlana Repetska of Ukraine, and Tamara Tokarova from Slovakia. But back to Santos Griswold for the United States. As we came on the air, I mentioned that 
you know, the individual skaters, unlike at World Cup events, uh, they have the opportunity here at the World Championships to race all three individual events if they choose, if they want to make it part of their schedule. And Kristen Santos Griswold will be doing that. She is entered in the 500 and the 1,000 and here in the 15. As a matter of fact, there's several of the top women who will be in all three events. Not many for the men. Uh, Park Jiwon and Stephen Dubois and Kim Gun Woo are all entered in each of the three individuals. But they'll be curious over the course of the weekend. Santos Griswold, Hannah Desmetz, Suzanne Schulting, and as we mentioned at the top, Ariana Fontana is back on competitive ice for the first time in two years, and she's jumping in a full bore. She'll be in all three events. We'll see Fontana coming up in just a couple of moments. But for Santos Griswold right there in the five helmet for the United States, the United, I mean, she has a real opportunity to win gold uh, for the United States. The last American woman to be on a world championships podium, you go back, it's been 12 years. And that's when Lana Gehring took bronze in the 500 back in 2012. What's interesting about uh, that last American world medal, Fon Kashin and Ariana Fontana finished gold and silver ahead of Gehring 12 years ago. And they are both here this weekend in Rotterdam. And the last American to win a world gold medal on the women's side, Catherine Reuter in 2011 in the 1500. So we'll see if Kristen Santos Griswold can uh, etch her name into American short track history here at the World Championships. Inside two laps to go. Zhang Yi's right now second. Santos Griswold, a clear lead. She hears the bell. Still is saying the Met right now in that third position. This is all Santos Griswold with uh, no real resistance here. He eases across the line in what will be a very busy weekend for Kristen. Zhang finishes second. Still is saying the Met third, 231.03. And they will take a maximum of five third-place finishers straight to the semifinals. We'll follow that. That number, of course, will shrink uh, if there are advancements via penalty over the course of these quarters. But so far, uh, two perfect races and not a single review so far. I've been talking with Stephen Goff several times over the course of this World Cup season about Santos Griswold. I mean, he and... Kristen, you could see a season like this coming even toward the tail end of last year. And, I mean, she has, even at the age of 29, uh, she has become one of the best short trackers and really perhaps one of the most versatile ones uh, in the world. And she's put it on full display this year. And this would be the perfect capstone for Santos Griswold. So trying to get on a world championship podium and then looking a couple of years down the road, uh, an Olympic podium for Santos Griswold. That's one of her last uh, main career goals. So now on to the third quarter final. And here is the just christened Crystal Globe champion, Kim Gilly, the 19-year-old. She's not going to turn 20 until July 1st. So we'll keep calling her a teenager for the next few months anyway. Ten podiums across the World Cup season. Seven of them were gold. Top-ranked 1500 meter skater, but I mean she's been an absolute dynamic force on the ice this whole season. Started the first couple of weekends of the World Cup in Montreal to gold in the thousand the first week. Back in Montreal the next week, one gold in the 1500. Silver podium finishes at the 1500, and she just hasn't stopped. And when you talk about, I mean, if you're following the you know, short track for the first time and you want to see how strategy and explosive power play in in a race like this, watch number four, Kim Gilly. Really? She is simply beyond her years in terms of understanding the nuance of the sports and the impeccable timing on when she makes her moves. And she likes to be toward the back of the pack in these 1,500-meter races. And then we've seen her countless times this year swing past the entire field within one full lap. And again, at just the age of 19, I mean, she is the, the future of short track with the brightest future ahead of her. 
And she'll be looking to get on a world championships podium for the first time in her career this week. And frankly, if she doesn't, it'll be huge news. So the third quarter finals underway. Renee Marie Stinge from Canada in the helmet 21. Nakashimi from Japan. Gabrielle Taposka from Poland who actually celebrates her 23rd birthday today. Happy birthday to her. She's in helmet 33. Kim Jo Jin representing Australia. Amelia Chua from Singapore and Matoga from Mongolia. Right there in the blue kit. There's Kim Gillen. And not only does Kim have it in terms of her ability on the ice, uh, she is as charming as they come with such a, a wonderful kind of visage and disposition about her, always smiling. You never know what color her hair is from event to event, but a uh, tenacious competitor on the ice. Nakashima right now in front, setting the pace. Kim toward the front here in this quarterfinal, not messing around on her first uh, spin on the ice this weekend. But five right now with the lead pack, and there's this uh, a soft little move by Kim to take the lead as we are inside the final three laps. With the battle for second, Nakashima and Stange, and the. Move to the inside by Steens of Canada now up to second. Sizable gap for Kim Gilly. There's the fight for second. Third will have a good chance to qualify straight to the semifinals. And we get the bell. I mean, Kim Gilly is in about second gear right now. Yeah, just a pedestrian like effort for Kim Gilly. And as I mentioned, Kim Gilly, she will not be in all three individual events. She will not race the 500. We've seen her in the 500 uh, a rare occasion a couple of times over the course of the World Cup season. But her forte is really the 1,500 and the 1,000. And those will be her two chosen events uh, this weekend. So the unofficial results are in. Kim wins it. Steen second. Nakashima 225-79, unofficially in third. Here's the inside pass by Steen. She got her up in the second place. And I mean, barely breaking a sweat, Kim Gillick. That was more just a little practice run for her, it appeared. Fans still making their way in inside Rotterdam, Ahoy. And there are the results. Nakashima 225-799 is her official time. And again, seven heats in this quarterfinal will take a maximum of five fastest thirds. Right now, the slowest of the third place finishes so far is 231-0 for Silasay and the Mets. We'll follow that over the next 10 minutes or so. And out of the fourth quarter final, Corey Stoddard of the United States surprisingly finished fifth overall in the Crystal Globe chase. Had a terrific year. Stoddard, 22 years of age from the United States. Six podiums, a couple of silvers, one at this distance, back in Seoul. Ready. Ariana Seagal of Italy, San Busanova from Kazakhstan, Lisa Eckstein of Germany in this quarterfinal, along with Zeneca Dindelk of Belgium, and Camilla Stormowska of Poland. Stormowska couple of podiums in Dresden back in early February in the 500 and the 1,000. Stormowski in helmet 27. And right now she will set the early pace. There is a look at Corey Stoddard of the United States. And she's been in the hunt for A finals almost every time she's been on the ice. And she's been on a World Cup podium in five of the six World Cups over the course of this season. Two podiums in her last events in Gdansk a couple of weeks ago. 
bronze in both the 1500 and the 1000. And it's a high quality year for Stoddard right now at the back of the pack, but overshadowed certainly by her teammate Kristen Santos Griswold. But uh, make no mistake, these two, Stoddard and Santos Griswold, uh, they are putting American women short track back on the map at a very elite level with their results over the course of this year. Stormowska now started up to second. And here comes Seagal in the blue kit. Getting around Stoddard and settling into second position. Kendall right now fourth. Stoddard, though, seven years younger than Santos Griswold, just 22 years old. So you can see the long-term future of women's short track for the U.S. Falls on her shoulders. See our first yellow box showing up in the lower left of our score bug. They will have one video review as Dendalk shuffled all the way to the back of the pack. Stoddard still out front, Stormowska second, and Ariana Seagal of Italy third. Lap and a half to go. Stoddard now taps the gas. And the bell tolls for Stoddard. Stormowska behind her. Seagal in a safe third place position. And Stoddard left hand down makes the final turn and will cross ahead of Stormowska. Seagal unofficially third. So as we get our first communication coming from our referees, liaison in Rotterdam, they're taking a look at a uh, possible penalty involving Zan Bustanova of Kazakhstan on a lane change in the outs against Dendulk, which is what forced Dendulk back from third or fourth most of that race toward the back as it wound down. And the skater from Kazakhstan, Zan Bustanova, right now on the 59 on the right side of your screen right there coming at you. And the results now from the fourth quarter about to go official. And there they are, and there will be no call on Zambu Sonova. So 228-183 for Seagal. Safe position to advance directly into the semifinals if things hold up. Three more quarterfinal heats to go. And the crowd is going to go nuts in about two seconds. And that is because Suzanne Schulting is on the ice here in the Netherlands for the first time this season. Uh, uh, certainly that's an emotional moment for her. Generational skater Suzanne Schulting, who has just come back from a, a trying last 10 to 12 months, but got back on World Cup ice just a couple of weeks ago, didn't really miss a beat. A couple of podium finishes when she was in Dresden a few weeks ago, bronze in the 1,000, silver in the 15, but the two-time reigning Olympic 1,000-meter champion, world gold champion at this 1,500-meter distance last year, so she is back to defend and on her home ice Go for the start. with her teammate Michelle Velsborg to her right. Ray. So Schulting, after winning the Crystal Globe inaugural trophy last year on the women's side with the one decal on her helmet, she won't have that next year, obviously, but an opportunity here at the World Championships. And, and curious to see kind of how her... Her form looks, it was actually quite good when we saw her over the final couple of World Cup events. She felt like, uh, tactically and physically, she felt like she was in, in almost mid-season form. But now, after a couple more weeks of training for this final event, the World Championship, this is really what Schulten has been targeting all year long. So Schulten right now in front. will set the rest of the field, Gong Lee. Sixth of this distance over the course of this World Cup season from China. She's in helmet 22 and 
Right now to the front, Michelle Velzebor is in the purple helmet toward the back. Julie Latai, the United States in helmet 50. Annabelle Green right there in the uh, 125 for Great Britain. The daughter of Olympians and Hedvig Hilde of Norway at the back of the pack. The teenager in helmet 111. So those are the six in this quarterfinal. Now Suzanne Schulting will be racing in all three individual events this weekend. Just like Santos Griswell, just like Hannah Desmets, just like Ariana Fontana. So the opportunities will be there. Nice race materializing here. There's Latai and Schulte. Oh, look at that. How oh, dangerous. Little cut there by Latai right in front of Schulte. Fortunately for Suzanne Schulte, kept her balance and kept her wits. And now Schulte's going to swing wide and try to take some control here. A crowd will elevate her to the front. You think these Dutch fans don't want to see a big weekend from number one, Suzanne Schulte? They're not alone. And Schulte, the blow by, clear lead, and the bell for Schulte into the final lap. Gong second, Velzebor third, Latai for the U.S. the distance fourth. And Suzanne Schulte will walk it home. On second, Millsmore, 225, should be good enough to move straight through the semifinals. A little, little smile there by Shelton. You can only imagine internally what goals and expectations that she has for herself this weekend. And again, she just came back to the World Cup circuit. There's the move by Latai that almost forced Shelton off her blades. But in terms of strength and elite quality of skaters on the women's side. We won't have seen anything like it all year, what we are going to see this weekend. Because Schulte with a couple of World Cups under her belt. Bhutan, a couple of World Cups under her belt. Fontana makes her return in just moments for this World Championship weekend. And you throw in Santos Griswold, Xander Velzebor, Kim Gilly, Stoddard, Desmets. So if you're at the top of the podium this weekend on the women's side, you will have earned it because everybody is here, as are the fans. Even that guy, hey, you're on the board. Two more quarterfinals to go. And speaking of Hannah Smith, quality season for her. Five World Cup podiums. A couple more podiums for Smet at the European Championships about six weeks ago. Four individual World Cup golds for Dismet. She ranked inside the top five in both 1,000 and 1,500. Fourth overall. And yes, welcome back. And we'll see Dismet in all three individual events this weekend as well. She's scheduled a race in the 500, the 1,000, and 1,500. And she has been on a World Cup podium at all three of those distances over the course of this year. We'll look at the anxious coaches of the six competitors on the ice. Position two. Inside position here for this Met. Go up to the start. Ready. And of this Met's seven individual podiums this year, four have come at this distance. So Regarded really as her best distance, very, very good at the thousand as well, clearly. But I think if you if you asked this Matt, asked Kim Gilly what their best distance is, if they had to choose, I'm pretty confident they both would say the fifteen hundred. I think Santos Griswold might say both. <laughs> but probably the thousand would be Santos if I'm if I'm guessing having some conversation with Stephen Goff, the US head coach. I would I would wager a penny that Santos Griswold's favorite will be the thousand. But again, you're you're splitting the hairs right there. They're all just so good at these distances. Well, here's the crew for the sixth quarter final. Tikanova from Kazakhstan in helmet 36. 
Chloe Olivier from France in helmet 45. That's Valentina Aichix of Croatia right now in the at the front in helmet 46. Then Achaya Chatai Song from Thailand and helmet 109. And Lam Chingyan of Hong Kong. Those are the competitors here in the next to last quarterfinal 1500. And on deck, in case you're wondering, Ariana Fontana. She's in the last quarter. Oh, we got a, our first spill. A couple of skaters, several skaters actually go down. That will be reviewed. And right now it's Tikanova out front. There's Desmet in second position. And Olivier right now third. And Chatsai Song, Isaacs, and Lam all go down. And they're a couple leads, a couple laps off the lead lap. So they will take a look at a potential penalty involving uh, Lam Chin Yan from Hong Kong. So that is being reviewed as we race. And three remain on the lead lap. Tikanaba, Desmet, Olivier. And there goes Hannah Desmet. Desmet finished fourth overall behind Kim, behind Santos Griswold, behind Bellsbor. But she was in the mix every World Cup weekend. And Desmet having to pull up. She's coming to the final couple of strides and a couple of the skaters who fell in that crash earlier were in front of her and this just kind of hit the brakes and said, I'm not going to get around, I'm not going to try and pass, so I'll just coast. <laughs> Looked like a glance to the coaching box as if to say, what am I supposed to do here? Why, why are they there? They didn't really give her any, any move. Generally, the decorum would be swing wider to allow the skaters on the lead lap to uh, conclude their races. They should. But this met not not bothered all that much. She's fine. Takes her quarterfinal lead down easily. So there is the contact right there involving uh, Lam Ching Yan of Hong Kong and Asik of Croatia. And uh, coming through the third skater also goes down. And that left Desmets and Olivier and Tsikhanova. The only three on the lead lap. So they will take a look. Could be shared responsibility still being determined at this moment by the officials. Again, our chief referee is Peter Worth. He's on the ice. The video referees, Danny LeMay, Sarah Henderson, they're up in the booth and assisting with Peter as he takes a look. There's a look at Mr. Worth. And there is the crew. And again, if you do draw a penalty, you will not be afforded a spot in the repisha. So uh, there is there is some import as to what the decision will be here. The skaters were not expected to be involved in a top two or top three finish in the race, but getting some extra races on the ice, coming through the repisha, an opportunity to win and qualify and get back in the main draw is always is always coveted. You see the right blade of Lam getting tangled in with Asik. And could maybe look at an advancement. We're getting word a possible advancement for Chatai Song of Thailand and Helmet uh, 109. As a result, right there, with the finish of that fall. But again, nothing has been determined officially yet. See Peter Worth is still analyzing. So I only have a moment, a couple of notes that we can bring up as we've been following along this World Cup season. We will see Jens Van Schwoot. He is here this weekend. He is right now scheduled to race a couple of events. He's been battling an ankle injury over the last uh, month and a half or so. He's the captain of the Netherlands squad. Uh, William D'Angino, who we did not see in the final World Cup events. Even though he finished third overall, he is in a couple of events this week in the World Championships in the 1,000 and 1,500. Now it looks like Peter Worth has made the decisions. Now he'll punch it in to the, um, 
the iPad down there on the ice, and we'll get our official results. And we'll see if there is an advancement. Maybe even a yellow card might be handed out. Get some discussions right there by the athletes just coming off the ice. Yeah, looking over Peter Wurst's shoulder at that screen facing us. As far as you, you do see an ADV right there on penalty. And you see a DNF, so he's punching all the various codes. We'll get the official results. Expected to be tremendous crowds this weekend here in Rotterdam. They love their speed skating. They love their short track. And it's been seven years since the World Championships have been here, and they've been building up to this all season long. And we're getting a couple of yellow cards handed out. That'll get the attention of the skaters. And we're taking a look at the video board results. Not yet posted. And now they are. So there are two yellow cards handed out. And one of them will go on Lam Cheng Yan right there from Hong Kong. So that will end her effort in the 1500. And still waiting to see on screen the official results. Tata Sung of Thailand also received a yellow card. There were no advancements as a result. Economa did finish third, but her 233 is not going to be uh, fast enough to move straight through. So we'll see Tikanova and Isaac come through the repechage. So a 1-2 finish of this Mets and Olivia. And here's a look at the infractions, the two yellow cards. There's a look in the 80 helmet. That's Lan Xingyang. So no penalty for the shared responsibility there. Involving ASIC of Croatia. But then the yellow cards, I'm assuming the yellow cards we mentioned at the at the end of the race right there. That's just Met kind of looking around saying, why are you not getting out of my way to let me finish? That's the result of the yellow cards. That's why the yellow cards were handed out to both Lam and Chatai Song. And they were involved in the in the scrape earlier in the race, and they were still kind of inside position as Desmet was trying to finish the race. So that's the reason for the yellow cards. And we mentioned that kind of live at the end of that race. Like, why are they there? Why are they in my way? Well, they draw the penalty as a result. So here we are now to the final quarter final at the bottom of your screen. Helmet 131, Ariana Fontana on the left side right there. Right. The five-time Olympian and 11-time Olympic medalist, Ariana Fontana is back on short track ice for the first time since the Beijing Olympics two years ago. So welcome back. Uh, set in the fall, there was an investigation going on involving a couple of Italian male skaters. According to an NBC article I read a few days ago, uh, Fontana they claimed they were skating dangerously in an attempt to perhaps cause her to fall in practice. And she mentioned that she was not going to get back on the ice until that was investigated and resolved and the announcement came out a couple of days ago that Fontana was going to participate in the world championships this weekend so she is back she is absolutely legendary in this sport 11 time Olympic medalist four through relays but the other seven individual Olympic medals including two gold to the 500 meter World Championship seven years ago on this ice in the 1500. She is the most decorated short track Olympic skater ever. She passed Apollo Ono and Victor Ahn with three more medals in Beijing and targeting again 2026 in her home country. And boy, what a wonderful sight to see Fontana back on the ice. Her first Olympics, she was 15 years of age. 
Won a bronze at 3,000 relay when she was 15. She's 33 now, and she's been at every Olympic since. And a two-time defending 500-meter Olympic champion. We'll see how Fantana looks over the course of this weekend. She'll be in all three individual events. Shim Suki, a legend in her own right for Korea, right now in front. Shim finished seventh overall in the Crystal Globe. Did not get back on an individual podium, but she's close. And right now it is Shim in front. Fontana second. Lee so Yoon of Korea right now third. And the bell. Fontana right now second behind Shim so -ki. And Fontana looking very good. We'll see how they... The mind and the body holds up over the course of the weekend. She's been training hard to get back on the ice. And second place finish for Fontana. Shim will take down the quarter. Lee finishing third. And we'll have no reviews coming out of this last quarter final. But again, just like we saw a few weeks ago when Bhutan and Schulten got back on the ice. She's just kind of kicking the tires, kicking the rust off. Getting back into live competition against the world's best. And a lot of room for growth, a lot of runway for Fontana to get better, really from race to race this weekend in Rotterdam. And again, we'll see Fontana in all three individual disciplines. So welcome back to the all-time great Ariana Fontana. So we had no advancements via penalty over the quarterfinals, so the five fastest thirds will also be sent directly to the semifinals. Shim and Fontana finish 1-2. So Simodi, the teenager from Hungary, was on the first quarterfinal who won the World Junior at the 1500 meter, will go straight to the semifinals. Still stay to Mets, Nakashima, Seagal, Belzebor, there you look at the big Qs, the A Qs, the automatic qualifiers, finishing first and second on that list. So three Canadians, Santos Griswold and Stoddard of the U.S., the Smet, Montana, and the small Qs right there are the fastest five-thirds. Seagal, Belzebor, Silsen, the Mets, and others. So that will wind things down for the quarterfinals on the women's side of the 1500 will take a break as they resurface the ice for the first of several times this week in Rotterdam and we'll come back with the men's 1500 meter quarterfinals about 12 minutes from now you're watching coverage of the ISU World Short Track Championships from Rotterdam stay tuned
maken met elkaar. Dat is heel simpel. Die mensen aan de overkant die hebben dat wat betekenis uh, gemaakt. Maar ik mag jullie al even vragen om even je telefoon bij te pakken. Pak even op je telefoon bij. Met dat ook niet allemaal bekend wel. Pak het even op bij. Ik zet je op even aan de achtergrond. Ladies and gentlemen, please take out your cell phone. And put on your little lamp on the next side. Lock me down, lock me down, lock me down. We need more lamps. Patrick Eden is back with you for the ISU World Short Track Championships in Rotterdam. Qualifying day here at Rotterdam, Ahoy. Now ready for the first of nine quarterfinal heats of the men's 1500 meter. We'll see 58 skaters. And we'll see the top four across the Crystal Globe chase on the men's side in this 1500 meter. Archie Wong, Stephen Dubois, William D'Angelo, and Kim Gun Woo. We'll see them across the next half hour or so in the 1500. So let's jump into the first quarter final. We'll take first and second place through the semifinals. Just a maximum of one fastest third. You have nine heats, 58 total skaters, at least on the docket as they come to the line here this morning. 
We'll see Friso Imans on his home ice here in the Netherlands. He will open things up in the first quarter final. Right there, getting loose on the ice. Lucas Speckenhauser. There's Lord Petre from Belgium. Peter Riches from Great Britain. Atahan Atan from Turkey. And Ivan Donchev from Bulgaria. Those will be the six in this opening quarter final. So look at Speckenhauser. So Imans, a couple of podiums over the course of this short track season at this 1500, silver at the Euros, and took bronze in the very last World Cup event a couple of weeks ago in Gdansk. Behind Dion and Zhang Sun Wu. Go to the start. There's a little extra energy on your home ice, especially for a big, big event like this. Ready. So we are away. You see the, the biggest names in the sport at this 1500 meter distance, as I mentioned. Park Dubois, Dangelo, Roussel. We'll see Wang De Hoon back on the ice this week in the World Championships. We'll see him a bit later. Standis Metz. And Pietro Siegel. Was silver at the World Championships last year at this distance. He'll be coming up a little bit later on. Park Ji Wong, the defending world champion at this distance and the thousand as well so away we go in the first of nine quarterfinals on the men's side Lord Petre of Belgium right now in front so there we go Yvonne Donchev so again the, the strategy may change a little bit if you're looking to avoid, avoid the repochage should see a little bit more jostling and more kind of assertiveness to get to the front because you don't you don't have the the buffer of a you know a solid third place time that ordinarily would get you through here for the men's the 1500 quarters that simply won't do it just a maximum of one third place finisher so we should see a lot more interest in a top two finish here to avoid the extra races and the repechage over the weekend Zimons with Rich's second. Speckenhauser now swings a little bit wide to go third. Zimons takes a gander to see where he is. Four laps to go. Still Zimons and Rich's one, two. Look very, very tight. All six in range. Beckenhauser, tremendous closer at the distance races. He right now is third. He is the one to watch here. And Speckenhauser looks interested in making his moves very shortly to get past Riches. There he goes. And the bell left. Speckenhauser too wide. A battle with Riches trying to defend. And Speckenhauser gets past him. And will even get to the line first. Demon finishing second. So Lucas Speckenhauser well-timed move. Out the final two laps and off he went. So Speckenhauser and Amon finish 1 2. Game race by Peter Riches. But he'll be shuffled to the repechage over the course of the week and trying to get back in the main draw. Here in that last lap, this is where Speckenhauser made his move. He's just so big, long strides, good power, quick power from Speckenhauser. And knows how to finish races. That's what we've witnessed over the course of this year. So this is the one World Cup podium for Speckenhauser, but he's been he's been a contender. And takes down the opening quarter. So right now, Rich is it's going to be tough to watch over the next you know, 20 minutes or so. They will take a maximum of one third place finish here, and you're the first one to finish third. Let's see if that 218 holds up. Doubtful, but we'll see.
generations of short track fans in attendance. Second of the nine quarters will feature Itzak Delotz, the artist, breaking out the, the pink helmet. The graphic designer designs a lot of the artistry that we see on his helmets over the years and has done some for some other skaters over his career. Big fan favorite here. So to lots on the Dutch ice in helmet 23. He'll be easy to pick out. Go to the start. Ready. Niall Tracy of Great Britain in helmet 41. He was on a European championships podium. He's had a pretty good year. I mean, he's been in a lot of semifinals, a couple of A finals here or there. It's been a, probably the best year for Niall Tracy across the World Cup season in his career. And accepts ball from the Czech Republic, Tobias Wolf of Austria. Maurice Yanis, Stern Mattis from Latvia. I haven't seen a lot of him over the course of this World Cup season. And then the 21-year-old American in the back of the pack early in this race. That's Jonathan so. so. Those are the six in the second quarter final. And as is often the case on these Friday early sessions across the World Cup, you can hear kind of the faint cheers of a lot of youngsters in attendance. He's now working in pro baseball in the United States and other events. Uh, day games, weekdays, a lot of times they marry an education day or a field trip in to help pack the arena, pack the stadium, and to get a lot of extra energy from those young fans. I'm guessing that's the case here today. There goes Jonathan So from the United States to the front. The lot second. Says Paul right now third. There's now Tracy breaking wide to get to the front. It's a little early for moves, but again, you need to finish effectively top two to move through. So Tracy comfortable at the front. The lot doesn't want to lose touch. Inside pass for the lot. They rise from the crowd. So third, but it's tightly congested with the front five. It's Zach Delot, the Olympian from the Netherlands. Oh, combination. Oh, and down goes Tracy and Delot. And so it got tangled, but stays on his blade. And now it's the bell, and a shocker as Wolf and Sedgepaul now set the pace. And they're not going to match Trace to the finish. They will take a first and second place finish gladly. So Tobias Wolf, yeah, how about that? Just as I scripted. The unofficial winner, Sejpal second. The lot is back up on the skates and he's gonna make sure that he completes the race as is Niall Tracy and we will have a clear and probably lengthy review. So we'll see where the contact occurred. I mean, Jonathan So is right in the middle of it with the U.S. And we'll take a look. There's Jonathan So swings hard in, and there's the contact with So against Tracy, and then Tracy against Itzak Galat. Right there, that's Jonathan So creeping up hard on the inside and initiating the contact right there, Jonathan So. Here's another look. Swings in, arm on the back, contact, and they both go down to the front, Galat and Tracy. So, as they take a look, our referee's liaison over in Rotterdam indicating that a, a potential penalty against the American Jonathan So for a, a, a late pass, which could and potentially would advance both Tracy and Delat to the semifinals. Again, that is unofficial, so they're still having a look at all various angles. And we'll see how they adjudicate this. There's Jonathan So. He takes off the helmet. We just saw three 
clean looks at the pass there for Jonathan So. There's a look at, at Delon talking with his with his coaches. So what he's, and he didn't really see anything. It's all kind of happened behind him, but he was the, the front domino who went down. And awaiting the results, but we could get a couple of advancements. And if we do, that suddenly means that the maximum of one fast third to be wiped off the books. And we would have no third place finisher moving through. So here's one more look. There's So in the 139. And they will penalize Jonathan So for that late pass. And tumbling into the pads go Niall Tracy and Itzhak Galatz. <laughs> the, the look on Galatz's face is priceless. Well, that's what short track is. Sometimes you're in the front, you think you're in the clear of contact. Not always the case. And start list for the third quarter final. Still waiting to get the official results from the second quarter. And we will get both DeLott and Tracy advancing. So that is now official. Start list for the third quarter. A couple of big names right there. Juan Guy Ho and Stephen Dubois. Dubois, the runner-up in the Crystal Globe by just 19 points. He pushed Park G1 to the very limit on the final day in Gdansk. So Dubois in the three helmet for Canada. Wang Dae-hoon, Olympic champion at the 1500 in Beijing. He's in helmet 125. They'll say Hayashi. <laughs> Was on the podium in Gdansk a couple of weeks ago in the, in the thousands of bronze. Lu Jan Shu of Hong Kong, Dietrich Barkaus from Switzerland, and Friedrich Pedersen from Norway. Those are the six. Miraculous couple of times from Switzerland over the kind of European swing of the World Cup season. He identifies himself on social media as basically a, a part-time short tracker and a uh, photographer as well. So he's at the back right now for Switzerland in the 188s. There goes Dubois, swings around a one, and they are 1-2. So now we know it will be a battle for the top two spots because zero third place finishers by time will move on because of the advancements of DeLotte and Tracy via penalty on Jonathan So. There should be a lot of action toward the front for the rest of these men's quarters. Four podiums this season for Wong in the World Cup season. The gold in the 1500 in the very first events in uh, Montreal. And his other three have been silvers. Dubois, meanwhile, ultra consistent. Six podiums, one gold. That was in Seoul in the thousand. And then one of the four continents. It's a gold in the 500, silver in the 15. But he's never been in a World Cup, a World Championship gold medalist yet. Hoping this might be the weekend for Dubois. So there's the bell. Wong and Dubois, one, two. Hayashi trying to close. He's in third. He needs to finish top two to advance to the semis. Making a move, and it's going to be close. He may have gotten that blade up ahead of Dubois, who appeared shocked that anybody was even close behind him. And that last three-quarter lap, for Kose Hayashi, it was brilliant and surprising. And Dubois might be second guessing that effort toward the line. It appears as though Dubois thought he had a top two finish wrapped up. And this is the final back straight. And yeah, right at the end, and it's going to come down to the stretch of the right blades. Mass credit to Hayashi. And we'll see if it's good enough. I mean, this is the final half lap right here. He makes a 
big push to the end, finds a little crease, and just shows a lot more effort. I mean, that's awfully, awfully close. And Bob glancing up at the video board to see the official results. Not yet posted. And it will be Dubois by six thousandths of a second hanging on. So Dubois does finish second. Great effort by Hayashi. <laughs> a reprieve for Dubois. I mean, that almost cost you 3,000 extra meters in a couple of early races over the weekend. But there you see the slimmest of margins for Dubois. That's a bit of an attention getter, I would imagine, for him. So now the nine quarterfinals will move to number four on the men's side in the 1500. <laughs> Dubois can exhale now. Thank goodness. And the six skaters for the fourth quarterfinal. Lee Wenlong. There he is, silver in Beijing behind Kim Gunwoo with the 1500. That is his lone World Cup podium this year. Okay, to Watanabe of Japan, Sebastian Lepep from France, Shalachat Toprom from Thailand, Roberts Kruzbergs of Latvia, and Yerkebulin Shamakanov of Kazakhstan. The light blue, dark blue, and a little bit of yellow in the helmet 44. Caught up a bit earlier in the week with a new assistant coach with Team Kazakhstan, Will Boomstra, who was the former head coach of the short track uh, USA team a couple of years ago. She's now helping out with the Kazakh coaching staff and the Kazakh skaters. She is on sites in Rotterdam this weekend. Dennis Nikisha get on the World Cup podium and get asked a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Top two only. Move straight through the semifinals. Shamakana up in a second. Watsanabe of Japan right now. Setting the early pace. Assertive move. Now in front. He went along second. Back to Watanabe third. But still ample time to set things up. All contact there involving Watanabe and Lee went long and Watanabe is down. Cruzbergs will now take the inside gap and take the lead. That will be reviewed. A couple of reviews as we soldier on. Shamakanov getting around Lee for second position. Kruzberg still in front. Taking a look at a potential penalty against a skater from Japan, Watanabe, and then maybe another one on Shamakanov for Kazakhstan. There's the bell or the buzzer for Kruzberg's. Shamakanov right now in qualifying position. We'll see if it holds up. Kind of finishes second, Lee went along third. Now, uh, where the contact was made by Watanabe against Lee went long, that was, I believe, in qualifying position. So, perhaps an advancement here. Taking a look at a potential arm block on Shamakanov. There is the contact with Watanabe. And again, that was in a fight for second place, which was qualifying position or advancing position anyway. So, if it is deemed a penalty, we would likely see an advancement there for Lee Wen Long. But again, nothing official. So they're reviewing two potential penalties. One involving Watanabe. And 
Now another potential issue involving uh, Lee Wenlong against Watson, obviously. So again, uh, a lot, a lot to be decided here. And then a potential arm block against uh, Shamakhanov of Kazakhstan. There's a look at Lepep. Not involved in any of these uh, yellow box reviews. A comfortably depart of the ice. So we'll take a look. Watanabe on the inside. Lee Wenlong in the red helmet right in there. So having a look at that. So we'll see if Watanabe maybe gets advanced. Is getting word that they're looking at maybe the Lee Wenlong not leaving enough space for the pass. Let's see how it's going to be resolved here. And getting word that the arm block potential penalty on Shamakanov has been cleared away, so there will be no call there. And still awaiting the official results and the result of that of that other review. Five more quarters to go. Skaters for the next quarterfinal on the ice, staying loose, staying warm. Let's see, stand this match to Belgium. And the we have a penalty. And the penalty will be assessed on Lee Wenlong, and Watanabe will be advanced into the semifinals. So it is a, a spatial issue for Lee Wenlong, not leaving enough space on that pass. So Watanabe, who did not finish the race, will be moved straight into the semifinals, and no repechage opportunity for Lee. First four quarters are in the books on the men's side, and now we'll get to quarterfinal number five. Stan Smet highlights this field, and there are the results officially on your screen. Le Pep finishing third. So Kruisbergs and Shamakanov are the automatic qualifiers, and Watanabe is pushed through as well. Seven racers in this quarterfinal. You'll see Prajwal Sharath of India on that back line. So he'll be the seventh of the seven. Helmet 194. Ready. Stand is met to Belgium. Well, will be the Kind of the class of the field with his quality year. A couple of podiums, both at the 1,500 meter distance. Finished second behind D'Angelo in Dresden. And finished second behind Wang Dae Hoon in Montreal in the opening World Cup event this year. Two podiums at the European Championships as well for this mess. Balaj Bontemix from Hungary. Brendan Corey from Australia. Olea Hyundai, who's Seen him in a lot of semifinals over the course of the year. Hyundai from Ukraine, Popovich from Serbia, Liam O'Brien from Ireland in the bright green kit, helmet 85. Yeah. Sharath at the back from India. Don't recall seeing him in many World Cup events this season. Follow his progress over the course of this race. Brennan Corey now begins to make a move, as does O'Brien. Those two will jump up to the front. The Smet does not want to get lost in the shuffle. Clear some space, but three wide to get back toward the front. And now it's Hyundai who moves up as well. 
Bontovic's in good position right now. It is a quiet third. Corian O'Brien, those are the front five. Nismet. Unable to hold the lead. Honda takes it away. Now it's a battle between those two. Hopscotching over one another. Honda takes it back again with two laps to go. Oh, and down goes Bontovic. He was trying to get around to Smet. Final lap. Honda in front. To Smet second. Brennan Corey trying to find a little gap. Corey goes wide. Tries to get around to Smet. Lost a little bit of his balance. And tied to the finish again. Hande, Corey, and Desmet. Hande wins it. Corey and Desmet a photo for that vital second spot. And they will take one review it's involving Lopontovic and uh, Desmet earlier in that race. That is what they're going to take a look at right there, involving Stan Desmet in the 12 on the outside. Did kind of lean back in, some contact. So we'll see how that is resolved, involving Bontovic and uh, Desmet. There's the photo finish. And it is Brendan Corey outpipping Desmet by seven thousandths. Good battle at the finish. So unlike the stretch that Hayashi just missed getting past Dubois at the line, this man doesn't appear as though he's going to be that lucky. This man is still going to be involved in a discussion on some contact earlier in the race, but if there is no penalty on this man, he will be coming through the repa shot to try and get back to the main draw. I mean, this is the guy who was a world championships silver medalist last year in the thousand. And he's been one of the more reliable. A finalist at this 1500 over the course of the year. But if he's penalized, there's no repechage at all. So that might be a case of shared responsibility between Bontovic and Desmets. But either way, it's going to be a much longer weekend for Stan Desmet. The results are in, and there will be no penalty, so shared responsibility is the determination, but Brennan Corey on that last stretch, good fight at the finish. Corey finishing second, and he'll move on to the semifinals, and that will move Desmet back to the repishop. So a lot of work to be done for Desmet in the 1500 this weekend now. And there's one more look at what they decided, shared responsibility for both Bontovic and Desmet in that first corner. So now on to the sixth quarter final, William Dangino. Finished third in the Crystal Globe standing. It's a distant third behind Park and Dubois, but good to have him back. And there's Jens Van Schwoots. Good to have him back as well. Big ovation for Van Schwoots, who's coming back from a, an ankle injury he suffered several weeks ago. World Championship bronze medalist last year at the, at the 500. There's D'Angelo, breakout year for the Canadian. Ready. Three World Cup golds for D'Angelo, all at the 1500. I mean, he is long, he is powerful, and has really taken this World Cup short track season by storm. I mean, there have been several breakouts in terms of performers on the men's and women's side this year. On the men's side, I don't think anybody has broken through more gloriously than what we saw seen from uh, William Dangelo over the course of this year. I mean, the, the skaters within the, the Canadian program, they've seen this potential kind of simmering over the last year or two. The potential has been there. 
But he has put it all together this season, does it with flair, does it with panache. And finishing third in the Crystal Globe standings, and nobody saw that coming when this World Cup season began. Van Schwoots right now in front for the Netherlands. Felix Pijon now representing Poland. He's in fourth, and there goes Dan Genoes out front with Van Schwoots. Peter Murphy of Luxembourg in fourth. There's Pijon, always a factor with his speed. He'll burst out to the lead. Five laps remain. Again, just first and second. No third place finishers at all will move into the semis. And as a result of what we saw that last race involving Stan Smith, you finished third. Uh, it's, it's a lot more treacherous to get back into the main draw now through the repa shot. So we'll see how Van Schwood's ankle looks. We'll see how Pigeon's speed holds up and we'll see if anybody can stick with D'Angelo in the lead. Van Schwoot is beginning to draft off an Angelo. One lap to go, and these two have broken away. And Van Schwoot, the inside pass around Angelo. So Van Schwoot will get around him and claim the quarterfinal, raise the arms across the line. All right. And the captain of the Dutch squad. Just a little pat on the back from D'Angelo on the way by. So a quarterfinal win for Van Schwood, D'Angelo finishing the second. They both will qualify and move to the semifinals. I almost wonder there for Van Schwood again, in that last bell lap, it was D'Angelo and Van Schwood, unless they fall moving through. You kind of wonder if this pass by Van Schwood, I don't think was done for show. I think it might have just been him testing his ankle. You know, if, he, if he needs to feel in race conditions, if he has it, if he can trust it, been battling this for, for several weeks. I mean, not a bad opportunity to do it, to try it out, see how the body feels, see if you have that that push, that drive. So if I'm kind of breaking down the race and kind of getting inside uh, the Y right there, because you don't want to risk any kind of fall right there because you're in qualifying position anyway. Now that to me would be a, a good opportunity for a Van Tua to try it out. It looks like it passed with fly color. So there's a look at yeah, thumbs up. Well done. So through to the semifinals. Jens Van Schwoots. Three more quarters to go on the men's side in the 1500. And it's only Park G1 highlighting this group. And man, what a year he has had. He has enjoyed the competition. It was not an easy uh, Crystal Globe title defense for Park G1. And Kim Gun Woo got out to a very fast starts over the course of the World Cup season. He stumbled a bit, but Park ji as things got tight and as he needed to put up uh, quality podium Go results and wins, he did, claiming three golds in the last two World Cup events to win the Crystal Globe and defend it by only 19 points. I mean, it was a tight race with Dubois. The Park ji enjoyed it, and Park ji was able to elevate his game and defend it. And now speaking of defenses, that's what his mission is here in Rotterdam. Because he is the defending world champion from last year in both the 1000 and the 1500. We will also see Park Jiwan race in the 500. And of all of his podium finishes this year, he has not been on a podium in the 500. He certainly hasn't raced very many, but a couple of times he did, he was unable to reach the podium. But his finest elite distance is what we will see in the other two, the 1,000 and the 1,500. Top ranked 1,000 meter skater, number three in the 1,500 behind Dan Snow and Kim. Certainly never easy to win the championship as he did last year, but it's even harder to defend. You're no longer surprising people. We'll see how Kim Gilly handles that next year with Santos Griswold and certainly Schulting and 
perhaps even Fontana and Bhutan, uh, among many others. There's a look at Park Ji Wan, who will keep that number one decal on his helmet next season. And Joe Proust sitting third. Rikana Carr of Turkey right now is second. So Long of China has now moved up to the front three. Three laps remain. And the front three have pulled away. Park, Akar, and Sun. This is Park's race. Make no mistake, the battle is right here for second. Soon Long gets around a car before the bell tolls. And now it is Park and Soon 1 2, and Soon is going to shut it down here. He is very pleased with where he is. A look over his shoulder, nobody close. Park G1 wins the quarterfinal. Soon Long will advance to the semis as well. It's good to get that first race under your belt. Nice one-on-one -on, -one on the ISU's website earlier in the week. Got to sit down with Park Ji Wan. Following his voyage through short track speed skating, connections to his family, the Crystal Globe Championship race this year against Stephen Dubois and teammates of Park Ji Wan. A <laughs> little stumble right there before the finish line for Park. Might have caught bad ice. Two more so the results from the seventh of the nine quarters. And two more to go. And speaking of Park Ji Wan's teammate Kim Gun Wu, he's next. It's been an interesting race. Get some pretty good competitors here in this next quarter final. And there they are, Kim Gun Wu. They and Selye of Poland, Andrew Hio of the United States. American Olympian Kim Gun Woo back on competitive ice for the first time in a couple of years. He's had a really good year. Again, he got off to a very quick start. Took a gold in his first event in Montreal when the season began. Another gold in Beijing. Bronze in the 1500 to four continents. I mean, he's been in the mix in basically every World Cup event this year. The number two ranked 1500 meter skater this season. To the start. Ready. And the return of Kim Gun Woo back to the senior national team for Korea. That has really helped push Park Ji Wan over the course of this season. <laughs> Lucas McDonald from New Zealand. Zhu Feng of Singapore toward the back. There's like Ghazgali from Kazakhstan. Tristan Navarro has had some good finishes over the year for France. So those are the seven on the ice in this penultimate quarterfinal. Kim will be racing in all three individual events this weekend, just like his teammate Park Ji Wan and Stephen Dubois. And there goes Kim to the front around Navarro. Big cluster behind. Heo looking to create some room, find some on the inside. And now it's Andrew Heo of the United States to the front. Navarro takes the gap as well. He's in a second ahead of Kim. But still ample laps remaining. Four and a half to go. Navarro makes a little push. Kim to the outside. Wants to stay up near the leaders. And now hits the accelerator and flying right past Andrew Hill. That's a tight little pass by Kim Gunawoo. timing from Kim was perfect. Oh, a little stumble there by Kim. 
Again, this is the eighth of nine quarterfinals to 1500, so the ice is not going to be terribly trustworthy at this stage. So you need to maintain your mental concentration here. There's the bell, final lap. Kim and Hio, one, two. Here comes Selyev from Poland. And around that last corner, it will be Kim and it will be Andrew Hio of the United States, a one, two finish. And one more quarter to come. Something to watch as we move into the last quarter final. And toward the end of that previous race, as Park G1 was covering the last couple of meters, I mean, there's a little bit of a, of a clip on some bad ice. And then nearly saw it take down Kim Gun Woo as well in the next quarter final. There's that quick assertive pass by Kim. And right there, that nearly tripped down. Left blade. Caught the ice, the tip of it. So can't take anything for granted, even if you're in the lead, kind of just gliding home. With all the, all the laps and all the races in this 1500. So the results are up. Kim and Hio will move on to the semifinals. Everybody else to the repechage over the weekend. And the Italian flag waves for the Pietro Siegel. But a great world championship last year. The world champion in the 500, silver in the 1500 last year behind Park G1. And there's Pascal Dion. Finished bronze at the Worlds last year. So Park won gold. And the silver and bronze medalists from last year's World Championship to 15 are in this race. Dion and Seagal. Ready. Top 10 overall finish for Dion in the Crystal Globe standings. He's in the four helmet. Nico Andermann of Austria. Peter Yazapati of Hungary, right now toward the back of the pack. Danilo Fedorenko from Ukraine. And Jung Yang Hun Ben from Germany. Grew up in Korea. Father took a job in Germany. So Ben, along with his sister, who's on the senior national team for Germany, moved over and Start representing the German short track squad a few years ago. Young in helmet 63. Seagal, an extraordinary European championships if you are with us a couple of months ago. Clean sweep. First time that had been done in, a, I believe, almost 20 years. He won all three individual European championships this year. World Cup podium has been a little bit more of a challenge, though, for Seagal this season. But again, the competition, I mean, it's so deep, fierce. Seagal just won World Cup podium in Montreal, bronze in the 1,000, the first week. But there's so much depth. Dion right now in front. Five laps to go. Yazipati, Federenko, 2 3. And there goes Seagull just kind of drifting forward. It's inside Federenko. Seagull now third. Eyes will focus on him because top two will move on in the semifinals. Seagull just biding his time, waiting for the moment to make the charge against Yazipati. And there it is. Stays wide, tries to get around Dion as well. He may have to settle in between, that's what he does. He sandwiches in between Yazapati and Dion. There's the bell. Seagal second, Dion in front. And a little bit of a gap to Yazapati in third. And it will be Dion and Seagal.
Quality raised for Pascal Deon. Seagull had to work a little bit. Those two will move through. This is where, I mean, Seagull, I think, wanted to get all the way to the front if he could, and then kind of relented at the last moment. And it's kind of slid in, definitely. Ahead of Yazipati. Here's that move again from Seagull. Again, I think he's endeavoring to get all the way around Pascal Leon on this uh, front straight. And then realized, nah, not going to happen. And I don't want to give up my key position here. And just didn't have enough room to legally slide in front of Yazipati, and it pays off. So those two shake hands, congratulating each other. See you in the semis. And the final quarterfinal for the men's 1500 is complete. Pascal Leon, Pietro Seagal, earned the semifinal berth. So the ice needs a bit of resurfacing, I'd say. A couple little stumbles by Park and Kim Gun Woo, but they are through as well. So here are the semifinalists automatically through. Speckenhauser, Bond, Second page of semi finalists as well. Good to see Brendan Corey there at Hyundai. And Van Twoots playing his quarterfinal. Dangeno through. And there's he, Watanabe. The, the advancement is also in along with Insak Delat. So everybody else will go through. The repishage, and we will take a ice resurfacing break, and we'll come back on this qualifying day at the World Short Track Championships with the men's 500 meter prelims. That's all when we return to Rotterdam. So sit back and enjoy the World Championships of ISU Short Track Speed Skating. We're back with more in about 15 minutes. Stay tuned.
Tournament director, ladies and gentlemen, the four time national champion, two time Olympian, and runner up of the European Championships. We're going to have a short interview with our tournament director. We're going to do that in Dutch, and then when everybody starts clapping, just join in. Sees Juffermans, you bent here opnieuw onze toernooi directeur. We staan in Ahoy. We staan sinds 2017 voor de tweede keer hier in Rotterdam. Ahoy. Wat, met wat voor gevoel sta jij hier? Ja, ik ben natuurlijk echt beter trots op hier mogen staan met een waanzinnige, waanzinnige aankleding. Super mooie reis voor, hele mooie partners aanwezig, heel mooi door de publiek aanwezig. En het publiek wordt natuurlijk alleen maar meer en meer genomen daar. Ik ben echt ontzettend trots. Jij bent ontzettend trots. De mensen met wie je dan een mogelijk maakt, niet alleen onze vrijwilligers, onze sponsoren, onze partners, maar het unieke is dat we op de vrijdag zijn, zes. En het unieke in Nederland, en dat weet met al die schaatsers van over de hele wereld, van al die veertig landen, dat we dat altijd onze scholen hier hebben. En die hebben me speciaal gevraagd om nog één keer even te laten horen hoe het klinkt als de Rotterdamse scholen in Rotterdam Ahoy zijn. Ja, alle zes. Zie je nou een trak in je ogen blinken? Hey, het is toch heel mooi om uh, juist de te laten zien hoe mooi deze sport is. Ik hoop dat het morgen alle tegen haar is gezegd. Nee, hey, die sport komt in de uh, um, Dan even vooruit. Hè. We hebben natuurlijk twee uitgevochten dagen voor de boeg. We hebben net Nederland in actie gezien. Met de vrouwen met twee door naar de halve finales. En de mannen met drie door naar de halve finales. Um, maar 40 landen. Was het nog niet zo druk, maar we hebben geen 10.000 man om je heen. Maar nu, die verandering, heb jij aan meegeholpen. Wat zegt dat over het niveau van de Nederlandse shorting? Ja, shorting in afgelopen jaar heeft een enorme groei doorgemaakt. Als je ziet, in 2012 organiseerde ik voor het eerst een hele mooie evenement hier in Nederland. En de mannen hadden toen niet leeg gehouden, dat was het unicum. En als mensen nu aan mij vragen: van nou, en wat denk je van dit weekend? Dan heb je het al over hoeveel gouden plakken verwacht je dat Nederland even binnen gaat halen. Dus die sport heeft zich enorm ontwikkeld. En de Nederlandse atleten die zijn echt, uh, nou, vooral bij de vrouwen, echt de favorieten hier voor de hoogste vredes. Um, zou je nog wat willen zeggen als je het ook even dan in het Engels doet? What do you want to say to all the competitors and to all the fans from all over the world? So yeah, I'm a short term speed skater, so I will keep it short. I wish the best of luck to all the speed skaters and of course to all the spectators who are here from abroad. Have fun and, and enjoy the event. Zullen we dat ook even in het Nederlands doen? Dat zei ik ook weer. Iedereen heeft natuurlijk heel veel succes en ook naar alle publiek. Geniet van deze mooie dagen, geniet van de short en sport. En uh, iedereen een mooie dag vandaag. Iedereen een mooie dag vandaag, iedereen een mooi toernooi. Laat het nog één keer horen voor een hele trotse toernooidirecteur en short zanger puur zang. Dames en heren, jongens en meisjes, Cees Juffermans. Ja, hartstikke goed dames en heren. Prachtig mooi. Je ziet al uh, dat onze blokjesleggers, onze tracksturers, die staan zo meteen al, uh, die zijn alweer helemaal klaar om het ijs op te gaan. 
En ik wil heel even kijken, dames en heren. We hebben al heel veel geklapt vandaag. We hebben al heel veel uh, bewogen vandaag. We hebben nog niet zo heel hard gezongen. Ik wil even één klein dingetje proberen, heel kort. En dan als jullie even mee willen zingen, zou dat fantastisch zijn. Moeten we dan maar de ramen, let op. Back to Ahoy Rotterdam as we prepare ourselves now for the first of 12 heats of the men's prelims in the 500 meter. 57 skaters across the 12 heats, first and second place finishers. And then a maximum of 11 third place finishers will also move through to the heats. And the first set of skaters are on the ice. And there is a look. Dennis Nikisha of Kazakhstan. Nikisha, this is this is his event from over the course of uh, his short track career. He's known as one of the top 500 skaters around. So Nikisha will be in this opening prelim. Fourth ranked skater at the 500 distance so far this year for Nikisha. And will now come to the line. Daniel Tibors of Hungary, Nico Anderman of Austria, Robin Bendig of Germany, and Tibor Mariki from Slovenia. I have no light. Hanster stopping the starter for the men right there. Yeah, saying, thank you. Telling Peter Worth that he has no lights on his uh, starting gun. Go to the star. <laughs> oh. He has light now, and we are off in the first of the 500 meter prelims for the men. So, Nikisha opening things up. A brisk four and a half laps. And Nikisha, one of the top 500 meter sprinters, particularly last year at the World Cup level. It's not been an easy road getting on the podium this season for Nikisha, but an opportunity here at the World Championships to do what he does best, which is get into championship finals and get on the podium here at the 500 meter distance. And Nikisha, no trouble here in the opening heats. Nico Andermann finishing second. So Nikisha comes through. And we've had a, a little bit of a reshuffling to the start list from what was initially put out. So I'll do a quick scan to see if we had any additions or scratches more likely. Might take me a, a little bit to kind of work through and see where the change uh, took place or changes, if there were more than one. And 
there are the results from the opening heat. Nikishan Anderman with the capital Q. They'll move on to the heats. We will see those heats coming up uh, fairly, fairly quickly, a little bit later on in this morning session. And out to the second heat. Kaczynski of Poland, Marcus Howard of the United States, Jujing Feng from Singapore, Karlinch from Croatia, and Liam O'Brien. There's a look at Kaczynski. Kaczynski, a couple of 500 meter podium finishes the last two World Cup events, both bronzes. So he is riding on some positive momentum. Go to the start. Head. So Kaczynski races to that first corner and will win it. It is bronze to Roussel and Pierre Gillet and Dresden, and bronze behind Soye Ra and Dubois and Gdansk. So right in the crest of some very positive results. Kuzinski and Howard right now 1-2. Kolinch right now third. And Kolinch goes down hard. Now that will not impact the front two. It is still Kaczynski and Howard. Howard finds room on the inside to make the pass. And the American will carry that lead through the final corner. And Marcus Howard of the United States wins the prelim. Kaczynski finishing second. And those two will head on to the heats. 500 heats for the men will come up after the women race there. A 500s here. In there, heats coming up in a couple of minutes. And that will actually close down this uh, first session here in Rotterdam after the 500 heats are through. And there's he, Cohen's kind of going down on his own volition. There are the results. Howard and Kaczynski are through. So while I have a couple of seconds, I'm still trying to take a look quickly at the updated heat list, the start list, versus the one that was uh, revealed yesterday. And I, I think I've isolated at least one skater who was in the initial start list who is not now. And it, I want to double check before I get to it. Let's make sure I'm not overlooking as we get ready now for the third heat. Celia Poland, Andrew Hill of the United States, Bongham of Thailand, and Kim Gun Woo of Korea will be in this third heat. Go to the stop. And there's a look at Andrew Hill of the United States here in. Prelim number three. Ed. He will have to operate out of the back of the pack. Quick start for Sellier. Kim Gun Woo, not known for really prowess at the 500 meter. We'll see how he fares. He is now up to third for the U.S. Delia gives up a little too much room on the inside. And there's Kim Gunn will blasting through for the lead. And now Heo slithers up to second. And here's the final lap. And top two move on to the heats. Kim Gunn Woo, Andrew Heo, and Celier will finish third. So Kim Gunn Woo comes to the 500 meter distance and takes down the prelim. Let's look at the clock. And Heo of the United States finishing second. Again, just to follow up on what I was talking about a bit earlier with the reshuffling of the start list from yesterday to today's official start list that you'll find on the ISU website. The one of the now notable absences that I'm noticing 
from yesterday to today, which now has impacted who is now in what a heat, which is different from what we had yesterday, is I'm, I'm trying to find Felix Roussel of Canada, who was on the initial list yesterday, the number three ranked 500 meter skater uh, this season, the World Cup, finished fifth overall in the Crystal Globe standings. I don't see him listed now on any of these prelims in the 500. So I've been carefully kind of scrutinizing the various heats as these initial prelims have been going on. And Roussel's name is not on the list. Well, there's his teammate. William Dangeno, ready for prelim heat number four of the 12 we will see. So no idea what has gone on with Roussel, why he was scratched out. But uh, he would have been a pretty good contender. I mean, he's, he actually won the 500 meter in Dresden just about a month ago. So once they take off, and again, being one of the top seeds, once they take him out of the start list, they kind of, you know, reapply the rankings and the seeds and, and change up who's in what heat. So that's why we're seeing some changes from yesterday to today when they take out one of the absolute top skaters at this distance. So Lu Xiaowang. A couple of years ago, swept all of the individual world championships in 2022, along with Angelo. They are 1-2, and good to see Lou and Angelo both on the ice. We did not see the Lou brothers, the final two European stops of the World Cup, and we didn't see Angelo in Gdansk. So they are now back, at least Lou Xiaowang is back. And he and Angelo finished 1-2. I have not seen his brother listed on any of the start sheets. I haven't looked at all of them over the course of the weekend, but Lu Xiaowang is on the ice here in the 500. There's Dan Genome finishing in qualifying position. Corey up for third. And there are the results. Corey right now is on the clock, likely to move through. Again, almost all third place finishers will go through. So Liu and Dan Snow will depart the ice. We'll see them coming up in probably about a 30, 45 minutes. Fifth prelim will feature Pietro Siegel, European champion about a month and a half ago at the 500. And Siegel, the defending world champion at this distance at the 500. Talk about how tough it is with the depth, but really on both sides now, the women and the men. But how tough it is to repeat, and even if you have a, a good year, it doesn't necessarily mean you're making a lot of podiums at this distance. So we'll see how Seagull fares here today at the 500. A little bit of ice repair before we get ready for this. Next prelim. But even if the year didn't turn out the way you wanted in terms of podium finishes for a Pietro Siegel, a good result here at the World Championships will diminish any kind of disappointment you may have about maybe a lack of podium finishes this season. But again, it's very tough with the com competition as deep as it is. But the defending world champion of the 500 begins his title defense here, Pietro Siegel. Saktibayev, Fedorenko, Erdenbileg from Mongolia, the other three in this prelim. So one would expect this would be Pietro Siegel setting the pace as he wants and his race to win. Saksibayev drafting close. Fedorenko will adapt to him in third. Saksibayev right on the heels of Seagal. And there's the bell lap. Still Seagal. 
Talks about it. Looked like he contemplated a move unnecessary, though. And they Seagull, Zach Zabaya, one two finish. Well, the title offense begins with your opening race in the prelims. And Pietro Seagull has claimed it without issue. And again, a lot of these skaters will be right back on the ice here in the next half hour or so in their heats. Again, these are the prelims for the men. The women will not have prelims. Straight to the heats with them. 41 skaters on the women's side of the 500. 57 plus or minus on the men's side. Start list for prelim number six. Points in Faircock. He's had a pretty good year at the 500 meter distance this year for the French Olympian. Faircock early in the campaign. A bronze to 500 in Montreal. A silver in the 500 in Beijing. And still some determined ice repair. There's a look at Faircock. Wang Dae Hoon is in this race as well for Korea. Ben Jung from Germany. Popovich from Serbia. Pedersen from Norway. Those are the five as they still treat the ice. Now we're about ready to get things rolling. They see everything, don't they? They feel everything. They know where the bumps are. They know where the cracks are, the trouble spots. Faircock, a race to the first corner, and he's going to claim that one easily. Finished seventh overall, the 500 meter distance this year, Faircock. He's kind of coming into his own this year. This is, he's had solid results in the 500 over the course of this campaign. Dahoon right now, second goes in, makes the pass, and it's Dahoon and Faircock. And Jung a tight third. And the bell app battle in that first corner. Some contact. That leaves room now for Ben Jung. And he will make the pass. And Wong will take it right back. And Faircock falls back to third. And Faircock, you see him gesturing right there. Hey, how about a potential penalty? Looked like Faircock was saying I got I got held or a little arm block. Or pulled back. We'll take a look. They will review. See what Farrakhan felt right there. Yeah, there was the pass after the contact between Farrakhan and uh, Wang Dehun. That was what Farrakhan was protesting here with Wang Dehun right into this corner. He thought there was maybe an arm block right there by Wang Dehun to slow him up, and Farrakhan just he could not get to the spot where he got his his uh, momentum and and speed back visibly bothered as he came across that back straight after the finish line and that is going to be reviewed a potential penalty on Wang Dae Hoon. We'll see what Peter Worth and company uh, determine here. And again if, if it's a penalty assessed there's no repishage opportunity for Wang Dae Hoon. Here's one more look. Farrakhan coming in. The left arm is down for Wang Dai Hoon right there. And is it enough to warrant a call? And if if it's not, Faircock's not going to be a happy man. And there's Quentin right there. He's still looking up, hoping that he's going to be advanced. And he may not, they, they may not make a call on this. We're still awaiting the official results. 
But he was bothered. He felt like there should have been one. There's Peter Worth. And it, there will not be any penalty assessed, so the results will hold. Wong and Zhong are moving through, and Faircock, I mean, Faircock finished third anyway. 41 491, but still, it doesn't diminish his uh, irritation right there. And now on to the seventh prelim here for the men. Jordan Pierre Gillet. We talked about the breakout stars this year. Santos Griswold on the women's side. Kim Gilley on the women's side. Dan Genoa on the men's side. Pierre Gillet in that group as well. Three times he has claimed World Cup gold in the 500, including twice in the same World Cup stop in Beijing. They ran the 500 twice that weekend in Beijing. Pierre Gillet swept both 500s. And that was then followed up with another uh, terrific run over the back half of the World Cup season. So Pierre Gillet in helmet 22, Park ji in this race. We'll see how these two battle it out. This is not known as Park Jiwon's uh, specialty. But the Crystal Globe champion is, is dueling it out front with Pierre Gillet. Sebastian Lepep is third. There's the bell. The lead to Park Jiwon. And Pierre Gillet right now, it seems like he's content in seconds. And Park Jiwon zigzagging his way from second to first. Second to first. That likes the effort. I can handle this distance. I got that club in my bag. And here's the back and forth between Pierre Gillet and Park Jiwon. And Park Jiwon closes it out. We'll see him coming up again fairly momentarily. And there are the results. 41 low for Park. Park Juwan, defending world champion at the 1,000 and the 1,500. Trying to add another championship at a different distance. That would be a stunner. Prelim number eight, Stan DeSmet. Kai Hausman of the Netherlands. Rikan Akar from Turkey. Vince Negrati from Hungary. There is Hausman. Big applause from the Dutch fans here in Rotterdam. We'll see Tune Boer and Jens Van Schwood coming up in a couple of moments in their 500 prelims. Stan is met. We we'll get a look there at Hausman. He's met a couple of World Cup podiums. And then the Euros, two podiums as well, including bronze, the 500. So see how Hausman fares. Desmet inside position. Hausman right alongside. And off we go. And Desmet wins the corner. And four laps to go now. Desmet and Hausman. Side move by a car gets around Hausman. Still some room on the inside, and a car will capitalize on that as well. This met second, Hausman third. And the final lap. And these three will likely all advance no matter how they finish. And it's going to be a car who's going to win it. Hausman does get up for second. This met third. And again, when you're having. 12 heats and a maximum of 11 fastest thirds also move on to the to the heats. Really fairly insignificant on who finishes first, second, and third, at least at this stage of the uh, the prelim. It's in the 500 for the men. But a nice race by a car. And nobody taking any serious chances here. Photo finish, a car, Hausman, Dismet, one, two, three. Good 
Nice ovation for Hausman. He departs the ice. And four more prelims remain here in the men's 500. There's Desmet. We'll see him in a couple of minutes. And there are the results. Negrati, the only one who will be now forced to come through the repechage. Fans of a car folding up the Turkish flag for now. Now to the ninth of the prelims. Nowinski of Poland. He is a tough competitor. Solid build. Very aggressive on the ice. The bronze in the final World Cup event of the season, the 500 in Gdansk behind Dubois and Nikisha. A little more ice repair before they are called to the line. It's been seven years since the World Championships of Short Track have been here in Rotterdam. And they're expecting some sizable crowds, particularly tomorrow and then again on Sunday to close out this short track season. There's Nowinski. Been a pretty good campaign for everybody on Team Poland. The relay squads have had some Terrific finishes. So off we go. A battle to the corner. Nowinski is going to win it. Out ahead, McDonald and Tomas Natalini of Italy. Tarek Amaric from Bosnia Herzegovina and Dietrich. Arklis from Switzerland, those are the five. Arklis is already off the pace and down. So Nowinski and Natalini break away. They are one, two. Battle for the third spot, McDonald and Amarjic. Final half lap, no need to take any chances here. Natalini though will make the pass and the Italian will claim this prelim. Nowinski seconds. Natalini and Nowinski, a one two. Uh, three more to go. And then we have betting that we will see another ice resurfacing before the heat to the 500 for the women and the men. Generally, that's the way things will play out. That will close out the first session on this opening day. And coming up later, we're talking about the, the prelims of the 1,000, the mixed relay quarters, the women's relay quarters, and the men's relay quarters. That is what is on the back half of this Friday here in Rotterdam. So now they make the introductions for heat number 10 here in the prelims. There's the... Full beard of Stephen Dubois, the runner up in the Crystal Globe. This guy who has basically done it all. Podium finishes the World Cup season for Dubois at every distance. Gold in the 500, gold in the 1,000. A couple of bronzes in the 15, 100. But Beijing, I mean, he showed his versatility. The short distance and the long distance. Silver in the 15, bronze in the 5. Equiterra, Belgium. Hyundai of Ukraine. Wolf and Lou, the other two. So five across the start line. There's a look at Ole Hyundai of Ukraine. In 71. Ready. Crowd will get a chance to rest up over these next, you know, 35 or 40 seconds, but 
two countrymen from the Netherlands will be in the last couple of prelims. So a chance to scream and cheer one more time. We'll see Tune and Boer coming up and Jens Van Schwoe, a big fan favorite here for the Dutch. Dubois and Degwitzer clear leads for first and second. Hande right now in third position. And an easy race for Steven Dubois. Degwitzer seconds. And Ole Hande finishing third. So Dubois will see him all three individual races this weekend. Takes care of business confidently. A little practice run for Dubois. But his sights are set on a world championship at one of these distances, if not more, this weekend. And he'll have stiff competition at each one with Pierre Gillet and Nikisha and Lou at the 500, Park G1 at the 1015, several others, Dangelo. But Steven Dubois has been ultra consistent this year. If he gets the right draw, catches the break, makes the right pass, he might find himself on top of a podium this weekend. Two more prelims to go. Tune Boer. He'll have inside position here. There's Tune. Cruzbergs, Donchev, Tracy, Karabin. The other is in this next to last prelim. Four on the podium at the European Championships. Silver, the 500, was a top 10 500 racer this year. Go to the start. Ruesberg should be a tough challenger in this race, along with Niall Tracy. And those three all get off the line relatively well. But it is Buer right now in front for the first full lap. Ruesberg's and then Tracy. Lap and a half to go, still Boer. Cruzberg second, little space back to Tracy in third. And Tune Bohr is going to wire the field in this prelim. Nice reaction, good salute to the crowd. We'll see a lot of that this weekend from the Dutch skaters. Something I want to pay tribute to all the fans who are coming out to support them over the course of the weekend. Doesn't matter if it's a a final for a world championship or a prelim. Very, very appreciative of the devoted, loyal uh, short track fans here in the kingdom. So, Boer wins it. Double thumbs up. His coach. So, one more prelim to go. We'll see one more Dutch skater. There are the results. Kreuzberg second. Tracy 41-6. You will in all probability head through as well to the heats coming up in about a half an hour. So here's the last prelim on the men's 500. Jens Van Schwoots. He's going to get a huge ovation as well. <laughs> Lin Zhajun from China, Miyata of Japan, Lezans from Latvia, and Rajwal Sharath from India one more time. There's Jens. Again, we saw Jens earlier in the 1500. He, he, he won his quarterfinal, tested out that ankle within the last lap. Looked like it held up very, very well, so I think he can trust it. And he'll need it here as he journeys through this 500 over the course of this weekend.
So Lynn the early lead, Miata and then Van Schwoops. There's the move by Van Schwoops. It's inside Miata, he's up in a second. Two laps to go. Now we'll see if Van Schwoops will try it again, he will. Lynn gave him some room. Van Schwoops takes it. Final lap, the lead to Van Schwoops. Lynn second, Miata third, and Jens Van Schwoot will claim another win. And he's into the heats. Yeah. No double thumbs up this time. This time it's applause for Jens Van Schwoot. So Van Schwoot, the captain of the squad, brings it in. And we'll see him back on the ice, testing out that ankle one more time a little bit later on. In this session, he'll be back on the ice within the hour. But I think at this stage, you're feeling 100%. Health is fine. Now let's just focus on advancing, getting to a finals, and skating for championships. A very successful first couple of races for Jens Van True today. And there are the results. You see the little queue next to Miata. We are done with the prelim, so his 41.5 is now officially good enough to move on straight to the heats. Ranch Woods and Lynn finish 1 2. So that's it for the men's prelims in the 500. We'll have a resurfacing break of about 17 minutes, and then we'll come back. Back to back with the women's heats of the 500 meter and the men's heats of the 500 meter. And that will wrap up the first session on this Friday in Rotterdam. You're watching coverage of the ISU's World Short Track Championships from Rotterdam. We'll be back in about 17 minutes time with the 500 meter heats. Stay tuned.
So that was the end, ladies and gentlemen, and we have uh, time for some fun in between of the wonderful races that we see here on the Wonderflies. And I'm going to say that in Dutch because we have a lot of schools in the house today. That was the end, we zijn all bits of all the kids and all the friendly schoolieren. Mark jullie even een vraag. Als je in Nederland op school zit en je bent jonger dan 18 jaar, ga even staan. Ga even staan. Ik dat. Dan kan ik gelijk even zien wat de scholen zitten. Ik ga een klein beetje doen. Ik kan het hier achter ook even zien. Zit er met scholen school hier? Hi. En die kan ook hartstikke goed. En die kan de overkant helemaal in de hoek. Laat je ze even horen. Deze kant jongens. 3, 2, 1. En naar de overkant. 3, 2, 1. Zit er daar op school of niet? Denk ik niet, hè? Nee, nee, een beetje op deze kant. Blijf staan, blijf staan, blijf staan, blijf staan. We gaan even kijken, we gaan Ahoy even laten trillen staan. En kijken of dat lukt. Volgens mij moet dat goed gaan letten. Goed luisteren en even mee. Komt ie. Licht op publiek, dus zou zo een klein beetje mooi zijn. Langzaam naar beneden, maar de knieën. Beetje binnen de knieën, beetje binnen de knieën. Langzaam naar beneden. Langzaam binnen de knieën. Ladies and gentlemen, can I get a very big hand for all the school, all the students of today? Ja, terecht, dames en heren, terecht, terecht, terecht. Goed, we gaan het stadion eventjes opknippen in twee. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do the Divine Stadium in half. So if you're uh, on this side, this is the DJ side. I, I, I wave to you, but perhaps it's more clear to me. Hi, this is the DJ side. Hi. Oh. And the other side is the speaker side. This is the speaker side. So, uh, we have a wonderful tune with some lighting on it. Dames en heren, we hebben wat licht op jullie zo meteen. En we gaan even twee helften tegen elkaar een klein beetje lawaai blijven. Dan gaan we even lawaai maken. Dus als je zo in het licht komt, mag je even lawaai maken. Maar er zit een tuntje bij. En dan mag je gelijk dan moeten, als het licht op jou is en een tuntje, we gaan van links naar rechts. Gelijk handen omhoog, schreeuwen, lampje erbij, maar ook niet zo blij. Dan wil ik even weten hoe de sfeer hier is aan de DJ site. 3, 2, 1. Hoe is de sfeer aan de overkant op de stiekerzijde 3, 2, 1? Hartstikke goed. En nu op de korte zijde moet maar even jezelf bepalen met welke kant je mee wil. Ja? We beginnen aan die kant. We beginnen aan de stiekerzijde. We beginnen aan die kant. We beginnen aan die kant. We beginnen aan die kant. Let op. Even kijken of het goed gaat. Momentje. Iedereen klaar? Komt ie. Als die bij jou is, gelijk wel aan je energie. Ja, komt ie.
En ik pak nog eens even dat lampje erbij. Ik pak nog even een lampje van je telefoon erbij. Aan deze kant, aan de andere kant, aan de korte kant. De kant. Pak even je telefoon erbij, dan heb je een lampje aan. Dan heb je een lampje aan, lampje aan, lampje aan. We hebben heel veel lampjes nodig, heel veel lampjes nodig. Ladies and gentlemen, even even een zelf zonder dat jullie please put on your light. Op de back staat op je vlog. Steek hem helemaal uit naar de rechterkant. Naar de rechterkant, naar de rechterkant. Helemaal aan de rechterkant uitsteken. Dan gaan we langzaam zwaaien. Rustig aan, rustig aan. Blijf rechts, blijf rechts, blijf rechts. Niks doen, niks doen. Keep it low. Dan gaan we langzaam zwaaien. Vier, vier, rustig aan zwaaien. ISU World Short Track Championships continue from Rotterdam. Glad you were with us on qualifying day from Rotterdam, Ahoy. And the Dutch fans are uh, plentiful inside the venue, and this arena will be packed in tomorrow and Sunday as we crown some world champions. All right, now ready for the first.
ready. Some hold. Ricky Doak was ready to rise back up. Doak grabs the lead. Yana Khan of Kazakhstan in the tank helmet. Valentina Asik from Croatia. Tatsai Song from Thailand. Chua from Singapore. And rounds out the opening five in this first heat. And there's Ricky Doak, who's had a really good year for her. We've talked about a lot of the Canadians who have really kind of stepped out from the shadows into the spotlight. Doak, Bly, Dangeno, Pierre Gillet. They've been right in that list. And Ricky Doak is going to easily take down her heat. Asik up for seconds. So much of this 500 is predicated on the start. And not much resistance there for Ricky Doak to take her inside position, get that corner, and then set up the rest of that race. Here's the finish for second right on the pass. So Ricky Doak will get it done, and she's into the quarterfinals. Quarterfinals, Quarters for the 500 will be beat them all. And there are the official results. Dokes and Ashish head on to the quarterfinals. Everybody else will get an earlier wake up call for the repishage tomorrow. So here's the start list for heat number two Kim Bhutan. Bronze medalist at the World Championships in the 1500 last year. The Olympic bronze medalist in the 500. That was in Beijing. Was on all individual podiums in Pyeongchang in 2018. Four-time Olympic medalist overall. Back on the World Cup. Came back a couple of weeks ago. And now here in Rotterdam for the World Go Championships. The Get back. Position three, take your time. Go to the start. Ready. And Bhutan puts the head down, drives forward, and she's going to win that opening corner away from Chiara Bete of Italy. Now Bhutan's form looked quite good again. When you don't have the you know the week to week competition against the world's best, you maybe have to retrain yourself there, or it takes a, a couple of races to get the feel back. But you know, for all the time that Schultz and Bhutan took off, and even Fontana, we saw her first race earlier today. You know these these elite skaters, the top flight skaters, it, it won't take long for them to get back to completely full form. And that's why this weekend will be just so interesting to watch when it comes to those three integrating themselves with uh, the stars of the sport that we've seen across the last four or five months. And an easy heat win for Bhutan. And now as we do begin to close in on you know, the, the Olympic cycle 2026 will be here before we know it. There's that smile we've come to know from Kim Bhutan. De dedicating herself not only to her skating, but also to uh, higher education and community involvement back in Canada. Sport needs her, and now that we're kind of closing in on 2026, it's not that far away. We're going to see all of the heavy hitters back on the ice as they pursue perhaps uh, one last Olympic moment of glory. And you're talking about Bhutan and Fontana, who's now 33, and Santos Griswold, who's 29 for the U.S. And everybody's targeting Italy in 2026. Speaking of Santos Griswold, here she is coming up in the third heat. Park G1, sixth ranked skater at this 500 meter distance Go this year. Start. 
ready. As Pietro Seagal was sweeping the field, a little stumble there by Santos Griswold. Didn't look like she made any contact with anybody, but the, the footing was unsure. So they stopped the race, and we probably are going to have some area of uh, maybe there was some right ice repair. repair. This is Ariana Seagull. Santos Griswold hops up onto the pads. We'll check out her blades. But see what happens here to Santos Griswold in the number five. They're checking the blades, Stephen Goff and company. Talking about Pietro Seagal when he went to the Euros and swept all three individual distances. Now that's what Santos Griswold did at the Four Continents earlier this campaign. And Park Ji Wan in this heat. There's a look at Park Ji Wan right there in the 85. In the 500 meter race that Santos Griswold won at the Four Continents, Park Ji Wan finished second to silver to Santos Griswold. So they have a, a bit of race history with one another this year at this distance. We don't see Santos Griswold a lot at the 500 meter, but certainly capable. Took down World Cup gold at the 500 in one of the runnings in Beijing earlier this season. Santos Griswold as this season winds down after this weekend will be able to get back home. Got married like a little less than me, a little less or a little more than two years ago now. Months kind of blend together. Back to her studies, back to her family, and back to her training. Randy. It will be a completely packed weekend for Santos Griswold in all three individual events. Took a while to kind of ramp up her speed after that little delay in the blade repair. Now Santos Griswold, the easy inside pass against Park. Ariana Seagull right now in third. This is where it's, it's always tough for anybody to catch up with Santos Griswold. Once she gets out to a lead, Unless you're a Kim Gelly with that type of speed at a distance race, it's basically race over once Santos Griswold gets out to this kind of advantage. Park finishing second, Santos Griswold takes down her heat. So thus far on this qualifying day here in Rotterdam, no major surprises as far as you know, top skaters, you know, stumbling in prelims or stumbling in quarters or in heats. The chalk holding up and just doing what they are tasked to do on this first day of the World Championships, which is win your race, physically fine, and take care of business. Because things will get tight, things will get tense, things will get intense soon. Beginning tomorrow. So Santos Griswold, as I mentioned earlier, trying to become the first American to win a world championship individual title in 13 years. There's a, a lot riding on this, and frankly, the expectations that she puts on herself uh, probably trump anybody else's expectations. But she has had that type of year where she could come in and uh, really do some serious podium damage this weekend in Rotterdam. Heat number four for the women's 500. Von Kashin right there on the inside in 78. We brought her up earlier. Go to the start. Silver medalist in Sochi in the 1,000. Randy. She's been one of the top 
500 meter sprinters, I mean, that's what she's been known as across her career. A couple of podiums in the 500 this season for Fon Kashin. So Polska right now second, Annabelle Green third, then it's Birich and Kim. And the bell for Fon Kashin. And now to Polska closing in, but again, the top two are on the quarters. And no big lead burst by Topolska. It's a solid race, finishing second to Fon Kashin. So Fon will move on to the quarterfinals. Kashin. Ranked number four at this distance over the course of the year. Has not had a lot of major podiums. I mean, two in the same World Cup events back in Beijing. So, Bob Kashin on to the quarterfinals tomorrow. Her history and accolades of the 500 meter sprint distance over her career very well documented a world champion several times over and still kicking still contending still getting on podiums this will be a challenging weekend to accomplish that now to heat number five and this met then they blind julie latai from the united states and sarah luca backside There is Dismet, gold, European champion in the 1,000, bronze in the 500. Donay Bly has had a solid year as well. Go to the start. There's Julie Latai of the United States. Ready. Bly had a two-podium weekend in Montreal back in the second World Cup. Earlier this year, silver in the thousand, bronze the 15. That's kind of her first magical moment on the senior circuit for Canada. So it's Desmet out front, chased by Bly and Latai. Again, the 500 not regarded as the best distance, and down goes Bly spinning out, exiting that first corner. Now that means Latai is up in a second position. And Hannah Desmet is going to take down the 500 heat. So Desmet moves on to the quarterfinals. And again, most of her damage over the last couple of years, the World Cup level has been mainly at the 1500 and also at the 1000. Hannah Desmet against pretty good field with Dene Bly, obviously. Crashing out Bly right there. This bad ice off balance. Bly takes herself out. And that means Julie Latai will finish second. She'll move on to the quarterfinals. So the official results from the fifth heat. Bly unable to finish. Uh, four more heats to go, and I mean, you can always tell when a Dutch skater is about to come onto the ice because there's this kind of slow building, percolating crescendo of applause that is going to reach its uh, zenith as they announce Suzanne Schulte's name. There you have it. So the Olympic champion, two-time reigning 1,000-meter Olympic champion, Suzanne Schulte. There's Wang Yi. Go to the start. World junior gold medalist just a few weeks ago. She's had a, a really good senior campaign. She went to the junior champs. Ready. She won both the 500 and the 1,000. She's going to be a force to be reckoned with over the next few years. 
So away we go. Suzanne Schulten in that glittery orange helmet right now. Seconds as Sophia Cognia gets out quickly. And there's the first lead change for Schulten. Schulten just back on World Cup ice about a month ago. And the form has been rock solid. And there's the bell. We'll see... If Wong can get around Kanye for second, that's the battle down the back straights. And Wang Yi will get the pass. The win to Schulting. And Wang Yi ranked third of the 500 meters this year as just an 18 year old finishing seconds. And Suzanne Schulting, form looking solid. And in a 500 meter race, not easy to do what she just did, even though it's just the heat. There may not be a great deal of inside speed, but coming from that outside position, Schulting quickly got to the front. A routine pass around caught in. No troubles the rest of the way. Now you want to talk about talent and speed for the Dutch. On the women's side in the 500, now that you throw Schulting into that mix, she's just a legend of the sport, that's all. But now as we move on to the final three heats, in two of these next three heats, we'll see undeniably the fastest two 500-meter skaters in the sport. And they're also from the Netherlands, Selma Putzma, and then uh, we'll see Alexander Belzebo. So, so so Pautzma will have inside position here in Heat 7. Three, check that, four silvers and two golds at the 500 meter this year. One of those golds was a dead heat with Alexander Velzebor. And then at the European Championships, silver again for Pautzma behind her teammate Alexander Velzebor. Go to the start. Ready. So as routine it is for the sun to come up every day, as, as routine as it's been for Pautzma to be in an A final in the 500 this year with Velzebor. And who knows, maybe this weekend things will break perfectly for Pautzma because she is capable of winning the world championship. I mean, her races with Velzebor have been dramatic over the course of this year. And this is Pautzma kind of laying down the gauntlet in her heat. There's Mazur and Sidorko fighting for seconds. And Pautzma easily, I mean, almost by a second and a half, wins her heat. And in a 500 meter race, that's not easily done. Now, if memory serves, I believe Mazur of Poland was in a, a bad crash in a, a mixed relay race a couple of World Cups ago. And almost certain it was Mazur in that uh, crash on the exchange with Nowinski about a month and a half ago. I believe that was in, in Dresden. And she went down hard. And if. If my memory is correct, this is the first time I've seen her back on the ice since, which is a wonderful thing to see. So there's Pautzma about to exit the ice. That was a wicked good race for Pautzma. And they're taking a look at one little potential scrape late in that race. Right there, involving Mazur and Sidorko. Sidorko goes down, Mazur caught her. And we'll see if there's any kind of call or if that is just allowed and there will be no penalty. So Mazur will finish seconds and move through. So a couple more heats to go. And we'll see Camilla Stormowska, Shimstaki. Then Dolka Belgian, Kanai of Japan. 
Stormoska in Dresden several weeks ago. A couple of podium Going finishes for her for the first time in her career. Bronze in the five, bronze in the thousand. Randy. With some of these short track skaters who are not named Bhutan and Schulten and Santos Griswold and Gilly and others. For the others, it's more of a gradual process of growth, of getting consistently out of the quarter to the semis, getting to an occasional A finals. We get a uh, Shimsa Key goes down. That leaves Stormaska up, and Kanai right now second, Dendok third. But for a skater like Stormaska, we've just seen kind of the incremental progress over the last uh, couple of years. So getting to some A finals, finally getting on a podium here or there. It's been her growth across the sport. And Sarmowska will win her heat. Can I second? I'm sure we'll get a look back at what happened with Shim Sook Hee earlier in that race. There's Shim right there in the six helmet. Coming out of that corner. Yeah, just like a lapse of concentration and balance for Shim. We've seen a couple of skaters go down in that area, but I didn't even see any kind of well, faulty ice right there with Shim. So Storm Oscar takes it down. And that will leave us with one final heat, and we're going to see two big, big names in it. There are the results. Shim Sukhi, to her credit, did get back up and finish. That will at least allow her an opportunity to come through the repishage to try and get back into the main draw. So here we go. The crowd's going to go nuts here in a moment for that woman, Alexander Belzebor. Fastest 500 meter skater in the world on the women's side. European champion. Five time World Cup champion this year. And the defending world champion, Alexander Belzebor at the 500. So she's in this race, but you know who else is? Ariana Fontana scheduled to be in this race. And the 33-year-old most decorated short track Olympian is in outside position in her first Go event the since the Beijing Olympics two years ago. This will be an interesting test for Fontana. We'll see what kind of condition she is in. Adamenko goes down out of that first corner. There is no whistle, so the race continues. Belzebor out quickly. Fontana second. And now we'll see what kind of closing speed Fontana has right now. Top two will advance to the semifinals, so there may not be a huge urgency for Fontana. We want to kind of get a sense of what speed Belzebor is carrying if you're Fontana because you're going to see this again later this weekend. There's the bell. Belzebor and Fontana, 1-2. And Fontana, clean race, finishing second to Belzebor. And Belzebor dialed it back over the last couple of laps. Andrew Belzebor, the defending world champion here in the 500. This is something she would love to defend on the home ice this time. So the defense again begins for Belzebor. She won it two years ago. She won it last year. And she's trying to three-peat her 500-meter world championship. And I don't know anybody who would bet against her right now. I mean, yes, Pautzma has been 
her very close shadow most of the year of the 500. And there are some other wild cards. We don't quite know if the speed and stamina is there for him from a Bhutan, from a Schulting, you know, from a Fontana. But I think you'd have to say the, maybe not the clear favorite, but the solid favorite would be Belzebul. Something to watch over the course of the weekend. All right, now we'll go to the men's 500 meter heats. We saw the prelims about 45 minutes ago. So here we go. There's Liu Xiaowang. Two years ago, it swept all three world championship events. On the way to claiming the world overall championship. Go to the, start. the reigning Olympic gold medals, the 500. Liu Xiaowang inside position here. Ready. False start. There's Kaczynski. We'll take a look. Yeah, a little wobble there by Kaczynski in the third position. That right shoulder, right arm. Wiggled a bit. And he'll be sent off. Mm. Ah, that's tough. Tough break in a world championship. Protective coverings on the blades for Lucas Kaczynski. False starts. That's disappointing for his fans. Mm. They wait all year for an event like this. Go That's tough. To the start. Ready. First and second place finishers. Go on to the quarterfinals, plus a maximum of four fastest thirds. And Kuzinski certainly would have been in, in the mix for a top two finish or a fastest third. So an opportunity with his false start DQ, an opportunity for one other skater out of this race to get outs. Rikana Carr of Turkey, Brendan Corey from Australia, Sibor from Hungary. We're all in the chase of Lu Xiaoang. There goes a car. He's up in a second. Corey joins him quickly. Liu Xiaowang navigates the last corner. He's going to win it. And a car second. Corey third. Yeah, certainly that's a tough watch in the holding area for Kuzinski. His false start disqualification. Means also no repechage for him to come back. So Liu Xiaowang takes care of business in the heat, and he's on to the quarterfinals tomorrow. So we'll see seven heats here on the men's side in the 500. Some of the names that we will see coming up. Kim Gun Woo is next. We'll see Dennis Nikisha, top ranked 500 meter skater last year. Park G1, Pietro Siegel, they're going to be in the same heat. Stephen Dubois and Andrew Hill and Stan Desmond will be in the same heat. Jun Boer, Lin Zhaozhu, Marcus Howard in the same heat coming up. And then Jens Van Schwutz and Wang Dai Hoon, along with Kruisbergs. In the last heat. So there is Cellier. Natalini. Ben Jung. Niall Tracy. All try to take down Kim Gun Wu. LEA, part of a Polish mixed relay team. They've had some success this year. Took silver at the European Championships. Go Men's relay, stop. bronze at the European Championships. Ready. 
Women's relay team on the podium in Beijing. Their world junior relay team got on the podium in Gdansk a couple of weeks ago. So future is much brighter for Team Poland with all the uh, accolades and finishes they've had this year. So here we go. Kim Gunwoo and Selye quickly breaking apart. Niall Tracy and Natalini lead the second group, but Natalini almost a little shove against Niall Tracy, couldn't get by him. It's a frustration from Natalini. There's the bell. That will be checked out. But it is still Kim and Selye out front. The pass on the inside by Selye gets around Kim Gunwoo, and those two finish 1-2. But yes, visible frustration toward the back involving Natalini. Not at all for qualifying position, but Natalini was near the back. Kind of went up right along Niall Tracy's then left arm go up from Natalini. He was not happy with Niall Tracy kind of getting in the way right there, not allowing him by. Kim Gunwoo and Selye are through. There's Natalini. They will take a look at that at that moment in that race involving Natalini. And Natalini was trying to. It looked, it looked like he wanted to make a pass, but he was kind of going straight up the back of Niall Tracy. He didn't really make a move either way to, to get by him. We'll, we'll see what happens here. So Tracy's in front of him. Natalini right there. I guess Tracy did kind of swerve back into the path of Natalini. And clearly Natalini was uh, more than irritated at that move. And they're having a look. We'll see if anything is uh, resulted from that. Contact from behind with Natalini against Tracy, but there will be no penalty assessed. So that's not going to improve Natalini's mood. But Natalini and Tracy will be coming through the repechage to try and get back into the main 500 meter draw. Here's William D'Angelo as we move to heat number three on the men's side in the 500. So Nikisha, top ranked. 500 meter skater last year. A lot of podium finishes. Silver in Go Salt Lake, silver in Almate, bronze in Almate, and a gold in Almate last year. Four times on a 500 meter podium last year for Nikisha. It has not been that easy this year. He did get onto the podium in Gdansk a couple of weeks ago. Silver to Dubois in the five. But he can really turn his 500 meter season around with a big performance this weekend, especially in this event. And he has the lead on Dan Janu. Miata third, then Neguter and Farrakhan toward the back. Nikisha and Dan Janu, a little bit of a gap, a move out by Neguter up to third. Still Nikisha tries to defend inside. Dan Janu around the corner will contend to finish second. <laughs> and the reaction says it all for Nikisha. Eh, it's all right. Not great. Not horrible. Yeah, some of these short trackers would not be very good poker players. You can get right inside their head and see exactly what they're thinking based on their gestures or nonverbal reactions. Watch Nikisha cross the line. What'd you think of the race? Yeah. <laughs> but room to grow for Nikisha, clearly. But he's into the quarterfinals tomorrow. I like it. Add some personality. Heat number four for the men's 500, Park G1. We'll see Kay Hausman. Well, Hausman again, big ovation. Little test for him here. Park G1, kind of a wild card this 500 distance. He claimed a heat 
victory in the prelims about a half hour ago. He'll have inside position. Kai Hausman will be in the third position. Pietro Siegel in between. And he has and Hyundai, the other two up top. Ready. And Pietro Siegel, the defending world champion of the 500. Oh, bottle up a little bit. Oh, a lot of contact coming out of that first full corner. Siegel somehow got through almost unscathed, but he was pinballed around. Parjiwan in front. Hausman fourth. Seagal, the reigning world champion, in second position. Coming up on one lap to go. Hausman stalking third. Still part G1. And now it's Seagal's job to just defend the second position. Last quarter. And Park will win it. And Seagal will move on straight into quarters, finishing second. But I tell you what, this race was written right at the beginning. I mean, you had determination from three or four skaters to get around this first corner, and look how much contact there is. There's Park, there's Seagull right there. They bang together. Yeah. Zaksibayev kind of holding up. Seagull got shoved a little bit inside. But everybody able to battle through and then allow the race to kind of settle in. Seagull finishing second to Park G1. A little subtle fist bump. Maybe I can podium at this distance, Park G1. Be curious to watch Park's, again, growth over the course of the weekend here at the 500. You know, when you're in the World Cup season, you can only individually race two events. And Park G1 is almost never going to race the 500. But here at the World Championships, you can race all three individual events. So why not? And he just doesn't have a lot of World Cup experience the last couple of years at this 500 meter. And generally his speed is, you know, mid-range, late race. Different strategy setting it all up and see how he fares. So far, so good. His two races, he's claimed them both. There's a guy who knows a lot about winning 500 meter races, Stephen Dubois. Andrew Ahio of the United States, Dan Desmets, LePep and Anderman. Dubois, the Crystal Globe runner-up to Park G1. And now we got the American Andrew Ahio spilled out coming out of that corner. And that will be reviewed and we will have a restart. Stephen Goff, head coach for the United States, going to check on Heel. Feeling around the right side of his head. Heel, second from the right. Comes into the corner. A bump down, and then, oh, it looked like the, the leg of DeSmet caught Heel's side of the head. Watch him as he goes down, or it might have been the elbow. So around the, the right eye right side of the forehead they're checking on him feeling around the ear checking the blades as well looks like he feels like he's okay so still feeling a little bit of pain for here but he's he's going back onto the ice and they have evidently cleared away the video review and now it's either a, a Glasses issue, oh, just a little smudge, that's all. Thought Stephen Goff was gonna to have to try and fix the glasses or get a different pair. So Heo back onto the ice for the U.S. And we will get ready for the restart in heat number five. And they did have a look. Right now Dubois is still wearing the, the, the warm-up parka. <laughs> Stayed warm. Now he'll 
Skate that over to the side. Discard. He was still dealing with the ear. But they did review, and there will be no penalty assessed, so all five back on the line. Go to the start. And now in the corner, more contact, and this time it's Anderman of Austria who gets spun around and tumbled. And that will be checked out as well. So, I mean, again, in a 500 meter race, so much of the race is determined by where you are able to get. Can you win a couple of positions from the outside out of that first corner? And Anderman was trying to defend the Smet to his right from the fourth position. It's kind of aiming for the same result, right? That contact was made, they'll have a look. Let's see if there's any, any penalty that will be assessed there. Anamon hops back down onto the ice. Stand this met over the pads one more time. Maybe a little last second race strategy. On, I mean, you know what this met's trying to do. And he's in that second from the outside position. So he's in position four. Much more challenging for this met to get to the front out of that first corner. Clearly he has the speed off the line to beat Anamon, but he's trying to get ahead of a uh, heel at least if he can. Ready. And away we go again. And Desmet does clear away from Anamon this time. And he will settle into third position as we enter our first full lap. It is Dubois and Heel, then Desmet, Anamon, and then Sebastian Lepep. A lot of smooth ice here for Steven Dubois at this stage of the race. Desmet cuts in and gets past Hio. And now they battle into that corner. And Desmet gets shuffled back. And Adamant takes the inside opening and gets the pass. Adamant is in the second. Dubois in the lead. Now can Nico hold it off? And it looks like he may. LePep is now up to third. And unofficially, Nico Adamant finishing second. Hio fourth. Desmet fifth. But they will have a look at a potential penalty in the middle of that race. It will not involve Dubois, so a, a clean win for the Canadian. So here's the Smets and the heel. They connect again in this race right out of this corner here. That is what drifted the Smet back, but as Heo did that, he kind of gave an open to his left on the inside. And Anderman was able to fire through. So here is where they both kind of drifted a little bit wide coming out of this corner, a little bit further ahead. And then Anderman in the red cut hard left and got the pass. And as a result, a second place finish. So they're taking a look at some contact involving Hio and Desmet, but it looks like that's going to be a no call from our referee liaison. That's, that's the message we are getting. And if that's the case, then Nico Anderman is going to be on his way to the quarterfinals. So, yeah, that's there's one of our first surprises. And that will force Hio and Desmet to come through the repechage tomorrow. So two more heats to go here in the men's 500. And Tuan Boer will receive the ovation. It's be a good race. Lynn, Pierre Gillet, Howard. Howard, good top end speed for the U.S. Lean, high quality. Pierre Gillet. Go to the start. World Cup 500 meter champ several times over this year. Ready. Three times to be precise. Pierre Gillet from the fourth position cannot make up any ground in that first corner. So it is Howard for the U.S. setting the early pace. Boer behind him and then Lean and then Pierre Gillet. He has some work to do. 
tightly bunched. There's the move by Boer to the inside past Howard. Now Lynn will follow through that same trajectory. And Pierre Gillet now up to third. So Howard back to fourth. Coming up on the bell. Pierre Gillet, three-time World Cup 500-meter champ this year. Trying to get top two. Boer in front. Lynn will stretch to finish second. And Pierre Gillet third will check his time. And take a maximum of four third place finishers also to the quarterfinals. And again, we have not had any advancements via penalty in this 500 yet. So we'll check the time of Pierre Gillet against the others. Right now, the slowest of the third place finishers that is in qualifying position to the stage is 41 5 7 for Ben Jung of Germany. <laughs> so Jim Bohr wins it. It's a 40.917 for Pierre Gillet, so that is going to help him avoid the Repisha. So almost regardless of what happens here in this last heat, Pierre Gillet will move straight through to the quarters. Marcus Howard, meanwhile, not so lucky. Fourth place finish for the American. Jim Chun Boer departs. Big ovation, big results. And now his teammate Jens Van Twilt will try to do the same thing. We've seen Jens on the ice a couple of times. Again, back from an ankle injury suffered about a month, month and a half ago. So good drive, good form. Physically appears to be back in 100%. And he will have inside position here on this 500. And there's some pretty good depth in this race with Wang Dai Hoon, Kruisberg, Nowinski. Fedorenko from the Ukraine. There is Jens. Ready. So the final race of this first session on qualifying Friday is underway. Wang Dai Hoon. Setting the early pace. Kruisberg's third, Van Twoots in between. Nowinski, who is a bull on the ice, he is fourth. And now the move by Van Twoot to the inside, kind of blocked away by Wong. And Van Twoot will try again. Now Kruisberg's and Nowinski come up and they come up and all three go down. Wong Dahoon all by his lonesome. Fedorenko, meanwhile, is in second position. And it'll be Wong and Fedorenko crossing the line first and second. And there is going to be quite a review on that one. And what did I say about Michael Nowinski of Poland? I mean, he is a charging bull on the ice. We'll take a look at Nowinski. He's in the 59 in the white and a red on the right of your screen. Here comes the pass on the inside for Nowinski. There's the contact with Kruisbergs. And Van Twoot goes down as a result. And is this going to be a late pass? Potential penalty with Nowinski right there. And what will that mean for advancements? If so, with Kruisbergs. And Van Schwoots. So that has all been examined at this stage. And now if you're sitting on the bubble as, say, the fourth fastest third place time, you get to the very last heat, and now you see a potential penalty and maybe advancements. All of a sudden, if you're the if you're the one on the bubble. You're not all that happy to see what's going on here. And right now on the bubble would be Hausman of the Netherlands at 41-419. He is the slowest right now of the four third place times that would qualify if nobody gets advanced out of this heat. But if somebody does, Hausman's out and coming through the repechage instead. They're still having a look at the replay. Peter Wirth, our chief referee, Sarah Henderson, Daniel Lemay, the two video referees. Van Schwoot hoping for a pass to the quarters. There's Nowinski hoping he doesn't get penalized because if he does, there's no repechage for him in the five. 
Checking on Van Schwoots. Great strategy. Also probably asking physically how you feeling. The ankle injury and now that collision there. Looks like Van ben Schwoot appears to be absolutely fine. Just kind of discussing that moment of the race. And here it comes. Again, Nowinski, the bottom of your screen right there. Kruisberg's in the eight, Nowinski in the 59. Van Schwoot is behind them. So there could be an advancement for Kruisberg's as a result if Nowinski does indeed draw the penalty. Because that was a qualifying position, second spot right there. We'll come down to the official decision. see it with Nowinski against Kruisbergs. And that yellow box in the bottom left-hand corner by video review tells you that they have still not officially come to any kind of conclusion yet. Nowinski, physical skater. We see this a lot. And you see Kruisbergs having his right ankle examined. Official word, there is a penalty. It will be charged against Nowinski for an illegal late pass. And Kruisbergs is advanced to the quarterfinals. So Wong and Fedorenko will move on automatically. Kruisbergs gets advanced, and as a result, Hausman from the fourth heat does not move through because of the fourth fastest third place time. So Hausman will need to come through the repechage tomorrow. So here's a look at what they decided. The end of the straight, the legal aid pass on Nowinski in the 59. And Kruisbergs will be advanced to the quarterfinals as a result. So we should get a look at the automatic qualifiers, the advancers, and the time qualifiers before we depart. This will close out the first session here of qualifying Friday in Rotterdam. And a reminder that coming up after the ice break, after the lunch break at 1700 local time, we'll have the 1,000 meter prelims for the men, the heat for the women, the mixed quarters, the women's relay quarters, and the men's relay quarters, all as we continue with the ISU's 2024 Short Track World Championship. Patrick Keene is saying thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of qualifying Friday, and so long from Rotterdam.